League. Today, it's the Buffalo Bills versus the New York Jets. Overcast skies and a chance of rain at Giants Stadium, where a sellout crowd of over 76,000 has gathered to see if the New York Jets can cool off the league's hottest team, the Buffalo Bills. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Meadowlands. Tom Hammond and Hall of Famer Joe Namath. Joe, what can the Jets' defense do to cool off this runaway train that is the no-huddle offense of the Bills? Well, first of all, defensive coordinator Pete Carroll feels this is a great opportunity for his defense. He says they, they visualize how they're going to pull this off. They know how they want to win the game, and that is don't let Jim Kelly get deep. They're going to play a soft defense in the secondary, force Kelly to keep hitting the short stuff, test his patience. They feel that Kelly's not going to stay patient. He'll go downfield deep, and then they'll get the interception. All right, so that is the game plan for the New York Jets. They're trying to do something that Pittsburgh and Miami have been unable to do, and talking about hitting a lottery, Jim Kelly has hit the jackpot in his first two games. The no-huddle offense has compiled over 1,100 yards in total offense, and Kelly with six touchdown passes against a very good Pittsburgh defense just a week ago. Well, the Bills with an overall lead in the series, and they have won the last seven games, outscoring the Jets, as you see, 194 to 71. They've scored 30 or more points against the Jets five of the last six games. Marv Levy, the coach of the Buffalo Bills, didn't have much to complain about in that 52 to 34 win over the Steelers last week. He said maybe some poor tackling and poor kickoff coverage. That was about it. Well, he complained about those uh, penalties in the end zone, shaking hands a bit. Bruce Cosler says his team will play hard regardless. They'll uh, not be intimidated by the Buffalo Bills. And uh, Cosler says the second season as the Jets coach, a little smoother. Jets to kick off. Aguiar with the kick to Fuller from the nine. Eddie Fuller hit hard, dropped it up the 25-yard line. As Kelly comes on with that offensive lineup, and the offensive line of the Bills may be the best in football. Wolford and Hull went to the Pro Bowl after last season. How's this for offense? Kelly leads the NFL in passing. Thomas is tops in rushing and total yards. Reed, the number one receiver. Now that no huddle with three wide receivers and a tight end is called K-Gun. After Killer McKellar, the tight end, BB comes in as the third wideout. Breaks a couple of tackles, tipped up at about the 29-yard line by the strong safety, Brian Washington. Here's the Jet defense. Mercero has been the steadiest member of that defensive line. Kyle Clifton has led the Jets in tackles, five of his seven NFL years. He's tops again. In the secondary, James Hasty, one of the best one-on-one -on -one cover men in the league. Now, the New York Dime brings Odegaard and Brim in for six defensive backs, replacing linebackers. Kelly, second down pass complete. Thurman Thomas, a Bills first down to the 38-yard line. Kyle Clifton in on the stop of Thurman Thomas. Already a lot of room by the Jets defense dropping back, giving Thomas the room out of the backfield in a big hole. The Jets are going to play soft, but they've got to handcuff Thomas. First down for the Bills. Hand off to Thurman Thomas. Third straight time he's touched the ball. Great cutback move. He takes it for 11 to midfield before the rookie linebacker Mo Lewis can get him to the turf. Big hole in the offensive line. Everyone's talking about the passing game. The running game of the Bills is awesome. Thomas jumping through a huge hole opened up by Kent Hall and his teammates. What an offensive line the Bills have. Business as usual for the Bills. They're already at midfield, and Kelly goes for a touchdown. Flag down. BB can't handle it as Mike Brim finally caught up to knock the pass away. There is a penalty marker down. Brim in pretty good position that time. Beebe's got a lot of speed to burn, and Brim may have gotten away with a little bump that time. It was awful close. Had the ball been a little shorter, I believe Beebe would have had it. Bob McElwee has a hold against the Jets. Let's take a look. You see if Brim will get his hands in there or on Beebe before the ball gets there. Holding, and holding. That, that could have been it because you saw the flag go down before any contact was made. It was Mo Lewis, the linebacker, that was called for the hold. There's Lewis, the rookie from Georgia, third-round draft pick. Yes, but I think they would have rather had that defensive interference penalty downfield. It looked like Brim did get away with a, an interference call. Automatic first down for the Bills at the 45 of the Jets. No score, opening drive of the game. Going underneath to Andre Reed, and Reed 
as a first down to the 34 of the Jets. Lewis and Brim converge on him there as Kelly goes underneath to Reed with his first catch of the day. A lot of room for Reed once again underneath. Now, what does this know how to offense do to the Jet defense and the other defenses? It never allows these defenses to do what they normally do, regroup after a play, get a little win. Behind Beebe, the intended receiver that time, first miscue of the day for Jim Kelly. We saw Andre Reed make that catch a moment ago. That's his 21st reception in just over two games and one drive. He's on an incredible pace, as is this entire Bill offense. Second and ten. Kelly, wide open. Lofton. James Lofton stopped short of the 20-yard line, but it goes for 14 yards and another Bill first down. Welcome to those of you who have seen Detroit deny Don Shula his 300th career victory, 17-13. We're in the opening drive of the game here at Giant Stadium. Buffalo moving the ball with a first down, and it's intercepted. Interception by Kyle Clifton of the Jets. He picked off the Kelly pass intended for Don Beebe, and Kyle Clifton with the interception. And the Jets come up with a big defensive play. And Pete Carroll, the defensive coordinator, celebrating his 40th birthday today, said they had to make some big plays on defense, get some turnovers. Joe, they did just that. Create the fumbles, make the interception. Kyle Clifton drops back, and Kelly just fires down the middle to Clifton. I don't see a receiver in sight. But this is what the Jets wanted to do. They want to force Kelly into airs, and Clifton did just that. They want to force Kelly to be patient, and the Jets' defense did that. First interception of the season for Clifton, as you see, 10 in his career. He had three last season. Now it's Ken O'Brien in the Jet offense with its first opportunity. And the handoff is to Freeman McNeil, the veteran running back, takes it to the 25-yard line and a first down, getting the start today in place of Blair Thomas. Here is a look at that veteran center Jim Sweeney who anchors the offensive line, which also features the road grader, 320-pound Dwayne White. Now Ken O'Brien banged up against Seattle last week. Number two jet passer of all time. Fellow named Namath is number one. O'Brien still looking for his first TD pass of the season. Because of injuries, 11-year veteran McNeil, 9-year veteran Hector will start and look for the Hawk on third down. Mathis becomes the third wide receiver. To McNeil, second straight carry, not as productive, tripped up and falls forward for maybe a yard. Here's the Buffalo defense. Bruce Smith still recovering from arthroscopic knee surgery. So the rookie Hansen gets a start. Bennett, Conlon, Tally all went to the Pro Bowl after last season. In the secondary, Odoms had an interception for a TD against Pittsburgh last week. Now, in the absence of Bruce Smith, the Bills will use their sickum defense much of the game. That's two down linemen and five linebackers. And that's exactly what the Bills are in right now, folks. Two down linemen and five terrific linebackers. I guess the best athletes on the field. And Brian downfield for more. Out of bounds. Incomplete. Ken O'Brien put plenty of air under it. J.D. Williams was covering Rob Moore on the play, and though Moore made the catch, he was out of bounds. Coming right at you, folks. You see Rob Moore has the step on Williams, but the ball is going to go off the playing field just a bit outside. Had O'Brien had the ball on the field, Moore would have had a big gainer for Coach Poslett. Excellent pass protection that time by the Jets' offensive line. Would have been 53 yards had it been completed. But instead, it brings up a third and eight from the Jet 27. No score in the game, 11.07 remaining in the opening quarter. The Bills driving on their first possession before a Jim Kelly interception by Kyle Clifton. Premature movement in the line, that'll be five yards against the Jets. This killed the Jets last week. Before the snap, five yards. Repeat third down. A series of penalties last week really hurt Coach Koslitz's offense and defense, I might add. The lack of concentration on the field, the mental errors. Now, that time, Irv Eaton, number 75, may have moved prior to the snap. But you know why? Because he's got Cornelius Bennett over him, too. White also moved. These guys haven't played against the kind of defense the Bills have in there, so they're not going to be themselves this early. 
Three wide set to the right. Now Toon goes in motion on third and 13. O'Brien has a man wide open and more. you to watch his head when he turns around that ball's on top of him he'll get his hands up just in the nick of time a little behind him that's just an acrobatic sensational catch and the timing by o'brien is excellent once again the jets offensive line put some top-notch pass protection out there rob moore the jets top receiver that was his ninth catch of the season tunes in motion first down play Freeman McNeil, excuse me, Johnny Hector getting his first carry. Hector takes it to the 45-yard line, a gain of three. Hector's ready. Hey, he said he's going to take his Geritol about an hour before the game. You know, we saw him about an hour and a half. He said it wasn't time yet. His body feels great. He's enthusiastic about it. He's confident if that offensive line can give Hector a few gaps, he still has plenty of quickness to jump through there for the good gainers. O'Brien's been on Hector, calling him the old man all week. Hector uh, older than O'Brien by one day. <laughs> Moore is in motion. Again on the ground. This is McNeil. Tries to cut up and gets maybe two yards. Carlton Bailey, the linebacker, came over to make the hit and then got help from Williams in the secondary. Well, I'll tell you what, Baxter's not in the game. Cornelius Bennett cuts across the line, and he's going to get chopped over here by Hector. A nice block at the knees, and you see him go down. That's a fine block by Hector. Baxter couldn't have done that one any better, but Cornelius Bennett had some help from his teammates. These five linebackers on the field, they're quick. They flow with the play. Lodish in now for three down linemen on the seventh play of the drive, third and five. Three wide, set to the right. Brian looks that way and has it complete. Rob Moore out of bounds, short of the first down, forced out by Kirby Jackson. That's what I don't understand. Rob Moore ran a pass route that time that was well short of the first down. Now, Moore in his second year certainly knows he wants to get the yardage for the first down, but you watch, well, you can't tell where he is until now. He's about four yards short of that first down, and that's not the kind of pass route you want to have when you need about five yards. You've got to get the yardage first. Louis Aguiar, as you see, has averaged over 40 yards a punt so far this season. Al Edwards deep for the Bills. Nice kick by Aguiar, hangs it up, and a fair catch called by Edwards. He fumbled it. There's a flag down. He was interfered with. Trying to make that fair catch, and Joe, that's another costly metal mistake by the New York Jets. Well, that's it. I mean, these guys are hurting themselves. To stop the Bills, you're going to have to hope that the Bills shoot themselves in the foot, so to speak, that the Bills will stop themselves. And Coach Coslett certainly hates to see his team commit the errors that take the momentum away from them. Number 87 on the kicking team. Interference with the opportunity to make a fair catch. 15 yards, first down. Timeout. Chris Burkett with a terrible error, costing Coslett and the Jets 15 yards after Aguiar had hung it up for 39. The Bills' high-powered offense on the field when we return to Giants Stadium in a scoreless game. Of the Bills tries to field this punt on the right of the screen. Chris Burkett's going to bump Edwards in the leg right here. And that is a no-no, folks. You have to allow the receiver of a punt plenty of room, a yard at least. Give him a chance to catch the ball unharassed, and then you can attack him. There's Chris Burkett. Former Bill played for the Buffalo Bills previously, 1985 through 89. First down, Jim Kelly hands it off to Kenneth Davis, who has replaced Thurman Thomas for this drive. And Davis falls across the 30 to the 31, tackled by Marvin Washington and James Hasty. So Thurman Thomas, who has been suffering from a variety of injuries as you check the final scores around the league, week three in the early starting games. Uh, Thurman Thomas injured his heel, his groin. He's had uh, nagging injuries, but uh, Marv Levy told us yesterday he was still ready to go. Kelly has to scramble and almost threw another interception. 
Wow, Kyle Clifton almost had his second. It was right in his hands, and he dropped it as Andre Reed drew double coverage. Marvin Washington was there, too. Well, Lofton's open up at the top of the screen, but he tries to, Kelly tries to stick it into Andre Reed, where Hasty and Clifton both had him sandwiched. A, a poor selection by Jim Kelly, but you know, folks, Jim Kelly doesn't make very many poor selections. He's three for six so far. There's his fourth completion. It's to Davis, who dances ahead and is stopped well shy of the first down at the 36-yard line by Washington and Lewis. Pittsburgh bounces back after being blasted by Buffalo a week ago, and Tampa Bay squeaks out a victory over Green Bay if they can hold on. That's still in the fourth. Here are the late starting games. Atlanta strikes early at San Diego. I tell you, I, I just didn't believe Detroit could beat Coach Shula and his Miami Dolphins up there. Prior to that game, uh, Detroit was giving up like 73% completions. How do you figure it, folks? Chris Moore will punt to that man, Terrence Mathis of the Jets. Only the fourth punt of the season by Chris Moore. Mathis fumbled it. Still loose, and the Jets finally corralled it. Wow, making a saving grab was Mike Brim, who picked up Mathis' fumble. A 49-yard kick, and the Jets will take over. We're still scoreless. Fiat Dealer, we build excitement. By Little Caesars Pizza Pizza, where you always get two great pizzas for one low price. By Canon, America's number one choice for copiers of uncompromising quality. And by Miller Lite. It's it, and that's that. Tom Hammond and Joe Namath from Giant Stadium. Scoreless in the first quarter. The Jets take over again deep in their own territory. This time from their 15. They started on the 14. They're out of possession. Play action pass. O'Brien plenty of time. Two breaks it off and takes the reception. Falls forward for a first down across the 25-yard line. Two broke in front of J.D. Williams. And O'Brien with plenty of time had the ball right on target. Plenty of time because of that play action pass. Toon's going to stop and come back, and he's going to be open for a while before James Williams can get there. But the play action pass, the faking of the run to Thomas, is what set this up for Big Al Toon. Al Toon, of course, dropped three balls last week, so he's going to try and get over this. We don't see him drop very many. You see his string going here at Giant Stadium. Moore is in motion. Quick pass O'Brien again to Toon. One-on-one on, one on the outside. And Toon takes it for about seven yards before he's pushed out of bounds. The fans want a flag for unnecessary roughness. I don't see one. No, well, that was nothing there. Nate Odoms just did a good job of driving him out of bounds and then stopping. Odoms giving Toon plenty of room. And when Odoms finally does get the handle on Al Toon, so what? They're out of bounds. He's just going to pull them down. There was nothing wrong with that hit by Nate Odoms. Big so, interception he had last week, Tom, back for a touchdown, huh? Against the Pittsburgh Steelers in a controversial play that was reviewed for about 15 minutes before they finally <laughs> gave the okay. Ken O'Brien out passing Jim Kelly so far. O'Brien's 4-5 for 40 yards. This is second and three. Blair Thomas, first carry. Gets to the outside. First down out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Blair Thomas, bothered by a lower back injury, carries for 12 yards and a jet first down. Thomas, the number one rusher for the New York Jets. Told us yesterday his back felt pretty good. We don't know how long he can go. Right out here, Leonard Leonard Smith kind of gets bitten in here and gives this corner to, Leonard, to uh, Thomas to get outside. Had Smith maintained his position outside, Thomas wouldn't have gotten to the corner. O'Brien down the sideline. Burkett. And a saving play by Burkett because Mark Kelso, the free safety, had dead aim on an interception. And Burkett, the intended receiver, had to turn defensive back to prevent it from being picked off. Well, you have to give Kelso some credit that time. And Burkett, too. Kelso read Ken O'Brien's eyes that time. Quarterback O'Brien went back faked to his right to Chris Burkett and then threw to his right. And hey, Kelso's back there watching all this action. Kelso gets over there and nearly makes a fine play, but credit has to be given to both of these players you're looking at. Burkett for breaking up the interception and certainly for Kelso reading the play. Second and ten for the New York Jets. Scoreless game. First quarter, 5.49 left. Johnny Hector 
But a good run by Hector takes it into Bill territory. Ripped off about six yards on that carry before he was stopped by Leon Seals. Let's see if there's any holding that goes on out here, folks. I understand there might be a little holding, but I think that this on the left of your, left of your screen, Williams kind of gets a good handle on Rob Moore and is just going to let him know that, hey, you can't be blocking me, man. He tries to throw Ro Rob Moore aside, but Williams knows Moore's a big, strong receiver. You can't just manhandle Rob Moore. Looks like they had the rodeo booked in here this summer. Trying to throw him down. Third and four for the New York Jets. Nice spinning move by Johnny Hector will net the Jets another first down. Cornelius Bennett was coming in with a big rush from the outside that time, and the Jets keep it on the ground to Hector. Hector, a nine-year running back. Watch how quickly he makes his cuts. Look at this. Look, is he running for daylight? Watch this little cut here. Huh? Hey, hey, that is some good running. I don't care whether you're a rookie, third year, ninth year or what. Johnny Hector says, hey, I'll take my Jared Tull. I'll get out there and I'll give it my shot. I can still go. And obviously, he has the quickness to still elude tacklers. Averaging five yards a carry so far. Three carries, 15 yards. First down, New York, 42 of the Bills. Florida's first quarter. O'Brien underneath to two. Wrapped up by Williams, but Al Toon takes it for about nine yards, and O'Brien on target so far today. That's been his favorite target, Al Toon. They ought to wear Al Toon out, throw him that ball about 30 times in a game. I would. He's a great big target, has speed, but these defensive backs have to respect and give Toon plenty of room. Three receptions, 26 yards here in the first quarter for Al Toon. Toon without the gloves today. No, he does have the gloves on told us that only in rainy conditions, humid conditions, would he not wear the gloves. He does have them on. Freeman McNeil bounces outside. He's got another first down to the 30-yard line before he's stopped by Cornelius Bennett. Welcome to those of you who have been watching the Cincinnati-Cleveland game. The Bengals still having trouble with that offense, and Cleveland wins two in a row getting the win at home. We're in the first quarter here at Giant Stadium. Tom Hammond and Joe Namath. Buffalo and the Jets are scoreless, and surprisingly, it's been Bruce Coslett's Jets team that has carried the fight to the Buffalo Bills. Their offense has really been rolling. Ninth play of the drive coming up for the Jets, and Walt Corey, the defensive coordinator of the Bills, has seen New York bite off some big chunks of yardage against his defensive unit. breaks free and takes it for a first down if it stands penalty markers on the field two of them down Carlton Bailey finally caught up to McNeil but will check the markers Bob McElwee will sort it out for us one flag came down late holding we have two fouls holding number 30 offense Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 58 on the defense. Offsetting foul, replay the down. Watch number 30, Baxter, on the left side of your screen. You may be able to detect a hold right here. Yes, goodness gracious, he's tackling. That's not good. Now, the penalty ends up being on number 58, Shane Conlon. But, folks, he's not that kind of guy. Shane Conlon, he's a good, hard, tough <laughs> football player. When he gets a penalty for unsportsmanlike <laughs> conduct or some extracurricular activity, I promise you it's by mistake. He is dead as a New York State trooper. He wouldn't allow that, would he? First down at the 30. New York Jets driving on the Bills. We're scoreless in the first quarter. Play action pass. O'Brien rolling out. Spots his tight end Chris Gressel, who makes a diving catch just short of the 15-yard line. And the Jets continue to drive. Bob Costas with an update. All right, Tom, here's how that game ended in Cleveland. Matt Stover from 45 yards out with, as you see, nine seconds on the clock. He sneaks it inside the right upright. The Browns are 2-1. and one. The Bengals are 0-3. Oh Cleveland 14, Cincinnati 13. The Browns are at Giants Stadium to take on the Giants next Sunday. 
And this Sunday, we are at Giant Stadium, and perhaps uh, a surprise brewing here. The Jets, under O'Brien, have taken a drive over seven and a half minutes now. It started on their own 15. Blair Thomas, twisting and turning, stopped short of the 10-yard line by Leon Seals and Carlton Bailey. But the Jets' offense impressive so far, and this is just what they wanted, Joe, controlling the football. Moving now on eight minutes, they've had the ball. Certainly, Coach Koslick has his offense, keeping the ball away from Jim Kelly's vaunted offense. A major key in slowing down the Buffalo Bills. Bruce Koslick and Walt Corey, the combatants on the sidelines at the moment. Corey trying to slow down the Jet offense. That's a twist. 11th play of the drive. Thomas in motion. O'Brien throws underneath. Hector can't make the one-handed grab. Bennett was covering Hector out of the backfield, and O'Brien now faces a third down. Well, Daryl Talley and Carlton Bailey right here put some pressure on O'Brien, so he had to unload that just a little before he wanted to. And Hector's not quite able to hold on to the ball. Pretty good pass under the circumstances, certainly, by O'Brien. But I'd have to give credit that time to Carlton Bailey and Daryl Talley for forcing Costa's quarterback to unload a little early. Key play coming here. It's third and four for the Jets from the Buffalo 11. Scoreless game inside the final minute of the first quarter. O'Brien completes the pass. Rob Moore takes it for a jet first down. He and draped all over him. Rob Moore, big target at 6'3", 205. Kirby Jackson tries to stay up with him and make the tackle short of the first down, but Moore just keeps fight, fighting forward. Nice offensive series so far. Moore has given the Jets a first down. It'll be first and goal. The football just shy of the Buffalo five-yard line. Clock ticking inside 20 seconds left in the first quarter. Hit in his tracks, manages to drive forward for a couple of yards. He's to the three. And the fans, 76,000 of them at Giant Stadium, appreciating the effort of the first quarter by the New York Jets. They're threatening the Bills' goal when we come back. As we get ready to start the second quarter, Tom Hammond and Joe Namath with you. And uh, Joe, what a surprise. The Bills go on the road for the first time this season and not finding things quite as hospitable as Rich Stadium. Who would have thought that the Jets could control the football as they have? I don't think anyone would have thought that. Right now, the Bills may be going through an emotional letdown from the first two games with Miami and Pittsburgh. They know they're a much better football team at this point, but the Jets, but they have to get out there and prove it. For the Jets, I'm impressed with that offensive line of theirs. They're opening holes in the middle, and they're pass protecting beautifully for Ken O'Brien. The Jets have had problems getting in the end zone from this point, though, and they've got to finish the task here. Running play, Johnny Hector to the one. The Bills vaunted no huddle offense has been outgained by Coslett's unit so far, 124 to 54. Yeah, but you know what's important? It's important that you do something with all these statistics. You put some points on the board. The Bills right now, they're not shaking in their boots. The time of possession is certainly awkward and certainly one-handed, but the Bills are still a confident bunch. But this kind of a drive does a, a whole lot for an offensive team's confidence, especially the Jets. Third and goal from the one. McNeil and Hector in the backfield. McNeil, touchdown. Levy doesn't like what's going on. Freeman McNeil following the blocking of Trevor Maddich, who's in there for the injured Mark Boyer, gets it into the end zone. And we do have a surprise on our hands at least this far. And the veteran Pat Leahy, 40 years old, the oldest player in the NFL, on to attempt the extra point. 
and it is good. A beautiful drive for the New York Jets. 85 yards, 15 plays in over eight minutes with Freeman McNeil taking it in from one yard out and the Jets on top of the Bills, 7-0. One out to a 7 nothing lead, going full throttle on the Bills. An eight-minute drive that covered 85 yards. Ball control at its finest. Aguiar's kick is short, taken at the 14 by Eddie Fuller. Fuller bounces away from a couple of tacklers and is taken down finally at the 28-yard line. Well, Bruce Coslett says his team was not intimidated by the unbeaten AFC champion Bills. Here's the way he looked as McNeil took it in from a yard out to cap that 85-yard drive. We'll return to the Meadowlands in a moment. Football League is brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Call Domino's Pizza right now, and you'll be enjoying a hot, delicious pizza during halftime. For the last scoring play, a beautiful double-team block right here by Trevor Maddich and Jeff Criswell, and Johnny Hector kicks out for Freeman McNeil before linebacker Carlton Bailey can get there. Look at that double-team, and then McNeil just gets a piece of his man, and, of course, McNeil does the rest. The Bills have had trouble stopping the run, and a rushing touchdown they give up, and have given up 59 yards rushing to the Jets already. Now it's Kelly's turn. Pressure on him. He steps up and delivers a strike to McKellar, and Keith McKellar takes it for 11 yards to the Bill 40 before he's stopped by Mo Lewis and Brian Washington. Pressure on Kelly, but he stepped up and delivered. The linebacker was covering McKellar that time. McKellar made a good press downfield and came back, and Ke Kelly finally found the open man. Kelly was calling his own plays. Hands to Thurman Thomas. Got through a narrow hole and set sail. Great cutback, and he ran into his own man, Andre Reed. And that slowed Thurman Thomas down, or he might have been gone. As it was, he covered 21 yards before Bobby Houston caught up. On the right side of your screen, just some good blocking out there. A nice hole in the inside created by Davis, the right guard. And then, of course, Mr. Thomas can do the rest. The pursuit of the Jets fortunately got there for the Jets. So it only takes a couple of plays for the Bills to be into Jet territory. Thomas stopped that time in his tracks by Bobby Houston. Houston, the fastest of the Jet linebackers, a plan B free agent from Atlanta out of North Carolina State, as you see the final scores on our Fram 10-minute ticker. These are all the early starting games. San Francisco used to be the best road team in the league. They've lost two on the road now. They lost here at Giants Stadium to the New York Giants. And the late starting game. Jim Kelly, Thomas wide open out of the backfield. Inside the 35-yard line, tripped up by Mike Brim. Thurman Thomas, the number three receiver on this Bills team. That was his 13th reception of the season. And he leads the NFL not only in rushing, but in all-purpose yards, just as he did a year ago. Five wide receivers now on this third down play. Kelly throws it behind his intended receiver, Keith McKellar. The Bills... Joe, noticeably not as sharp as they have been in their first two games. You know, one thing I think is hurting the Bills today, they're used to having those 80,000 people up at Rich Stadium, certainly the last two weeks, to really fire them up. The Bills have to be a little bit flat. They've come off of two big games against Miami and Pittsburgh. All the enthusiasm and the fireworks in this offense created up at Rich Stadium. Today, they don't have their crowd with them, and I promise you, that crowd pulling with you, pulling for the team, fires you up, and you play better. 52-yarder by Scott Norwood. It would be the longest of his career. And it's good. Scott Norwood, 52 yards, the longest field goal of his career. And it's now a 7-3 game. Scott Norwood had been kicking short. In fact, Pittsburgh a week ago averaged beginning drives on their own 41-yard line. So the Bills signed a kicker, Brad Aloiso, who had been cut this week by Atlanta after missing a 26-yard field goal. And Daloiso does what he's supposed to. He kicks it out of the end zone. Now, Norwood had to live all the offseason with that missed field goal in the Super Bowl and was in a slump to start this season. How's he feel about a career-best 52-yarder? That says it all. 
Here's Norwood on the sideline and replaced in the kickoff department now. We asked Marv Levy about the signing a guy just for kickoffs. He said, well, you sign a punter, don't you, just to punt. As McNeil carries for the Jets. And he said, we punted three times this season. We've kicked off 15. Made sense to us. A good surge by the offensive line. Dave Cadigan in there, left guard for the Jets, really drove forward. Freeman McNeil followed right behind him. The Jets now also have Brett Miller in at right tackle, spelling Irv Peck. Now watch this. Watch. You see the line fire out. Now you lose the line. That's because they're downfield. Look at that surge by the Jet offensive line. And they do have some fresh legs in there. Miller spelling Eatman. Those two split time usually at the right tackle spot. McNeil, Freeman McNeil, the Jets all-time leading rusher who had 7,600 yards for his career, and he has played well in the first quarter plus of this game. This is what Freeman McNeil sees. Now, where do I go? Find that hole. He finds that little crack of crevice and gets through there. McNeil, the number one rusher in the NFL back in 1982 in his 11th season, 31 yards on the ground today. First down for the Jets from their own 31. They lead Buffalo 7-3. 10-40 remaining in the first half. O'Brien deep. Moore. Got it. kept the pass on the field 53 yards Rob Moore with his fourth catch of the day the Jets eschew the ball control that time and go for the bomb Moore gives him a first down at the Bills 16 Blair Thomas not much there. Thomas drew a crowd, and Cornelius Bennett, who plays in the center of that five linebacker defensive set, whose responsibility is to go to the football. He did that then, and he is one of the best at that with that great quickness. Yeah, they call him the Sikkim defense. They want Bennett to go after the ball wherever it goes. Now, the Bills wheel line build Bennett up in a three-point stance from time to time on a down position to rush the passer. But basically, they have him in the middle. They want him to follow the football and attack. Six out of eight times inside the 20. The Jets have come away with points, including a touchdown on the first and on the uh, goal line one-yard situation earlier in this game. Ryan scrambles and ducks it to Baxter. Brad Baxter, good leg drive. He takes it inside the 10, and a flag goes flying. Cornelius Bennett wrapped up the legs of Brad Baxter but couldn't stop that forward momentum. the Bills. Nope. Against the Jets. Bob McElwee signaled the wrong way. Well, maybe it's one each way. I don't know. They haven't settled on that yet. Could be. If it's against the Jets. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. 69 offense. 15 yards. Repeat. Second down. Well, Jeff Criswell gets called for the unnecessary roughness once again. This reflects back to last week. Watch 69 get in there late. That's just a little too late with the headgear and a spearing type move, and that is a no-no. This is what the Jets did last week. They hurt themselves with the penalties and the blunders, and Poslet just cannot do it for the guys. He said, hey, the players have to win out there. He said, I can't stop them from making penalties. They have to stop those penalties themselves. So now it's second and 19 for O'Brien, who's hit eight of his first 11. Out of his hand and incomplete. I don't know if his arm was hit as it came forward, but the ball just popped out of his hand. Well, it was going forward. That's why the referee, I guess, blew the whistle. Let's 
watch and see if you folks can tell at home was his arm in fact going forward here good pressure by Daryl Talley ah one of the well I don't think he's underrated these days I think the ball just slipped out of his hand that time looked like it Talley had a hand on the other shoulder but it is an incomplete forward pass and O'Brien now 8 of 12 119 yards here in the first half They're reviewing the play. It was ruled an incomplete pass, and I don't see uh, any problem with that call. But they are reviewing it. But I don't know what they can review here. What, what if they say, all right, it wasn't an incomplete pass? I mean, what are they going to do? They're going to say, uh-oh. Well, they're well, they, going to start the play over. Coach Levy wants to know, too. The Jets did cover it if it's ruled a fumble. Sure. Well, let's take another look at it, folks. Uh, maybe you can tell again. O'Brien just looked like he appeared to lose control of the ball. On the right, Daryl Talley will get in there quickly. But you see the ball slipped right out of his hand. Now, was the ball ever going forward? I don't know, but the Jets end up... <laughs> I don't think anyone ended up falling on the ball here. But watch it in normal speed, and you see what the referee has a problem with in deciding. Well, his arm was going forward for sure. The ball, I don't know whether it ever got going forward or not, but hey, what are they going to do? <laughs> They've got to give the ball to the Jets anyway. Marv Levy wants an explanation. Well, I don't Norm, blame him. Norm Craggs, if the replay official, is taking a long look. And Bruce Coslett wonders, you know, that uh, two-minute limit of making a decision is somewhat of a joke. Well, we did see, what, a 15-minute uh, look last week, didn't we? You see, the ball was recovered after the whistle was blown. The referee blew the whistle. You saw the players standing around and the ball loose, and then the whistle was blown before it was recovered. So I can't imagine who Bob McElwee, the referee, would give the ball to other than the Jets. This is the kind of thing you'd hate to see as an offensive player when you have your offense going some tempo and rhythm working for you you hate to see this long kind of delay it disrupts your, your rhythm and you just don't feel good about it. Let, let's take a look at it one more time folks. his arm O'Brien's arm is definitely coming forward now I don't know that the ball ever got headed forward but O'Brien loses the ball on his own as Daryl Kelly gets around there just a hair late we have a reversal. The play is ruled fumble. The replay is looking for the proper spot. I want to see the proper spot as well as who recovered it. Let's see where they put it. You folks check it out. We're going to run this play through, see the proper spot, and I want to see whose ball it is. A fumble. I don't believe the arm was in the throwing motion. Okay, it slipped out of his hands. It's going to be a fumble. Now watch McNeil stand around Baxter standing around that's because the whistle had been blown we assume well that could be the spot if they spot it right there I still haven't seen who picked up the football yet the well, whistle blew before anyone picked the ball up that's why I cannot imagine the ball going over to the Bills folks watch it you see the ball right there bouncing around the whistle's blowing. There's McAfee on the right blowing the whistle. The ball has not been picked up. Look at the right of the screen. McAfee has blown the whistle. The play is dead. You folks look over here. This official's head is down. His arms have waved. And here's the ball still sitting on the ground. Now, if the whistle's blowing, the play is history. No one recovered, as you said from the outset. That's outside. right. The play, the play was blown dead by the referee. We have a reversal. The players will fumble. The Jets will get the ball at the 28-yard line is where the whistle was blown. The down will count. The down will count. Okay, we got that clear. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right, Bruce. That's exactly right. Oh, boy. All right, back to football now. Third and 22 for the Jets. They're at the 28-yard line of the bill. Four wide receivers in the game. More Mathis, Toon, and Burkett. O'Brien had room to scramble if he wanted. Got the pass away short of the first down. 
had a long way to run, and so he sent it in the air to Moore, who made the catch for 13 yards, but well short of first down yardage, as we check our Fram 10-minute ticker on the late games. 13-yard game. Boy, the uh, Chargers are still struggling, winless, and trailing Atlanta by 10 at home. And Indianapolis, uh, their head coach, Rod Meyer, has heard the rumors about his job being in jeopardy. If they go 0-3, <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. A head football coach's job is always a little shaky. Leahy with that great string here, trying a 32-yard field goal. And he nailed it. And for Pat Leahy, that is... Football League. They'll stop the game and give him the football as Pat Leahy becomes the fourth leading scorer all time in the National Football League. And he has the Jets again ahead by seven. It's 10 3, New York. It's in the elbow in a sudden death game back in 74, I believe. Fuller takes Aguiar's kickoff and returns it to the 27 yard line. Pat Leahy. I'm sorry to say this, but he looks 40 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether Pat will appreciate that. I imagine he's heard that a time or two. Meanwhile, we have a Buffalo Bill injured on that kickoff return. And while they tend to that injury, we'll try to identify the injured Bill for you when we come back with the Jets leading Buffalo 10-3. Here, Mitch Parrott looked like he injured his right knee, which already uh, had a brace affixed to it. But a tough week for Mitch. His father, Paul, injured in an accident earlier in the week. Here's the give to Thurman Thomas. There's a penalty marker down as Thomas is tackled at the 31-yard line. You know, I talked to Parrott before the game. And he was concerned about his father, Paul, back in Catanning, Pennsylvania. He said, hey, Dad, we're pulling for you. His father had a severe concussion and a compound fracture. And now I know Holding his father. Number 67, offense. 10 yards, repeat first down. I know Mitch's father, Paul, is concerned that his son has hurt that right knee again. One of the players rode up against it. Barat's a tough guy. Their size in this thing up. Boy, you know those knee joints just were not designed to be bent sideways. You it's, should it's know as well. Awful thing. Thing. You should know better than anybody. Farad is the is the man that used to uh, paint his face in the Doctor Death that uh, the NFL has banned. He had his Harley Davidson parked at the stadium when we were in Buffalo last week. Kelly at the five yard line by Jeff Logaman. are covering those receivers. Kelly has time. Look, Jim's dropping around. He's trying to find somebody. And then Lagerman comes from the outside. That was good pass protection by the Bills, but the Jets had excellent coverage downfield. Now they stop Thomas on the run. Brian Washington tackles Thurman Thomas. And it'll bring up third and about 33 for the Buffalo Bills after that Lagerman sack all the way back to the five. Again on the ground to Thurman Thomas. Not much there. Got only a couple of yards. Dennis Bird from that defensive line, number 90, led the charge for a fired up Jets defense. You folks that are watching this game at home, look at these fans. That's the way the Bills fans get fired up. It lifts your team. It gives you that enthusiasm. The Bills are a little flat right now, and the Jets are sky high. Fourth down, depart from his own end zone, Chris Moore. First one was a good one. Terrence Mathis deep for the Jets. Good high kick, but short. Mathis bumped by his own man, and the ball bounces out of bounds. Mathis colliding with a teammate after a 41-yard kick. Grimm was the man that got in the way. Well, next Sunday, NBC brings you more great NFL action beginning at 12.30 Eastern time with NFL Live. And some of you will see the man uh, who made the Giants defense feared around the league, Bill Belichick of the Cleveland Browns. They come in to play 
the New York Giants and the Browns a winner against the Bengals today. Others will see the Bills against the Bucks, the Oilers against the Patriots or other regional action. Check your local listings. NFL football next Sunday here on NBC. The New York Jets, time of possession, number of plays, dominating the first half. They lead by seven, 6.09 remaining second quarter. Johnny Hector. Hector in his ninth year out of Texas A&M. Again with uh, a first down chunk of yardage that amounts to about eight yards. Shane Conlon well, on the you. tackle. The Bills, Tom, have gone back to three down defensive linemen here to try and stop the Jets. They're going back to their regular defense. The Jets still get an excellent, excellent serve by their offensive line. I'm sure defensive coordinator Walt Corey has got to be concerned. Mitch Perrot out for the game after banging up his knee earlier. Meanwhile, second and two for O'Brien and the Jets. Play action pass. O'Brien hit as he released it. Thomas with the catch, and it will be a jet first down. Cornelius Bennett, again, that freelancer in the middle of the defense, although they've gone to the three-down lineman. There he is. Check those eyes out, folks. He's checking things out. He's reading the quarterback. He's reading Thomas. He's watching what O'Brien is looking at, and then he attacks to make the play, but not before Thomas is able to pick up the first down. Ken O'Brien off to a great start in the first half. He's hit 11 of his first 15 passes, 143 yards. Jets with a first down in Bill territory. At the 43, and a Bill jumped offside. The rookie Hansen, second-round draft choice out of North Dakota State, was drawn off. Before the snap, five yards, repeat first down. Drawn off by the tight end, Chris Dressel. Well, the tight end is allowed to reset. Now, I, I don't know that this really should be called on Dressel because he is in a three-point stance. He is on the end of the line of scrimmage. He's an eligible receiver. He's allowed to shift, folks. He's not allowed to show the play's beginning or simulate the beginning of a play, but I think that was a bad call. Makes it first and 15. Blair Thomas, nothing there. He stopped perhaps for a loss by Leon Seals. Let's go to Bob Costas for an update. At the Coliseum in L.A., Tom, the Raiders jump in front of the Colts 10 to nothing. Jay Schrader hitting Swervin Mervin Fernandez for this 16-yard touchdown. More bad news for the 0-2 Colts. They're trying to rebuild that offensive line to protect Jeff George, and their center, Ray Donaldson, goes out with a broken left leg. Tom? All right, it's been a rough season so far, but the normally slow-starting Colts who are slower than usual. And Troy Taylor, Troy Taylor, the quarterback of the Jets now in his second year out of California, has replaced O'Brien. Play action pass, and Taylor has to scramble, dumps it off short to Hector, and he will be stopped for a loss on the play. What was going on there, Joe, as they brought in Troy Taylor, who did have a 51-yard touchdown pass to Rob Moore last week? Well, the play prior to the last running play, Darrell Talley threw O'Brien to the ground. He was able to get back there and make contact with O'Brien after he let the ball go, just let it go, I might add. So I believe that's the play that O'Brien got roughed up on, the one that Darrell Talley got to him. Well, O'Brien is a tough quarterback coming into today's game he had played in a hundred games and been sacked 300 times in those hundred games he is a tough guy he'll bounce back if you see him working his left arm it appears. Freeman McNeil with a little burst takes it to the 41 yard line It'll be fourth down for the Jets. You know, you run a draw play in that situation because your quarterback, Troy Taylor, is not quite ready, not quite warmed up. Bruce Costlett loves his field position, and he did not want to risk losing that field position, hoping that they could make it on a draw play. And so it will be Louis Aguiar. Aguiar, last December, won a putting contest at the halftime of a San Francisco 49ers game. Some scouts for the World League of American Football remembered that. Barcelona drafted him, and he played in Barcelona this last WLAF season. In fact, uh, his mother of Spanish descent, so it worked out great for Aguiar. The only problem was he couldn't speak Spanish. They kept looking for him to do it, and he couldn't do it, and he gets it out of bounds. 
No, it's going to be a rule to touchback. I thought it was going to be out at the one, but they say touchback. It'll come out to the 20. Still a 41-yard kick by Louis Aguiar. The ball just hits and bounces across the goal line, breaks the plane of the end zone, and folks, there's an upset maybe in the making. Plays back, O'Brien gets sandwiched by Tally and Hansen of the Buffalo Bills, and you'll see that he falls a little awkwardly on his right shoulder, but he's holding his left, so the good news of that is it is his left shoulder and not his right shoulder, and he may return to the game. Here's Kelly with a play action, and under pressure, he sends it far downfield. Beebe has it knocked away, flagged down on Tony Stargell, who was defending for the Jets. It's going to be interference on Stargell. Lagerman and Byrd were putting the pressure on Kelly, but he got it away far downfield. Coslett can't believe it. Interference call on Tony Stargell. Pass interference. Number 48, defense, automatic first down. Well, the field judge, Bob Wartman, decides that this is interference, and Stargell does appear to get there just a hair early. Now, he is playing the ball. Stargell is really playing the football there, folks, and that's another one of those calls that you wonder, really, did they have to call that interference? He said number 48, but he meant number 45, Tony Stargell, as Thurman Thomas makes the reception. And you see the time remaining down to 140 in the first half. Boy, Stargell had such good position on that. Really was playing the ball all the way. That was a tough call for the Jets, and that might be just what Kelly and these Bills need to get their offense on, on track. Trying to tie it up before halftime. Again, Thomas over the middle. Close to the first down. It'll depend on the spot of the football. Mo Lewis made the tackle for the Jets. The Jets dominating the first half but the Bills with a chance to get back in it here and hope you'll stay with us in intermission for the Domino's Pizza NFL Live Halftime Report. Bob Costas, O.J. Simpson, Will McDonough, all the scores and highlights. Domino's Pizza NFL Halftime Report, uh, not counting Bill Parcells, who was in Cleveland today for the Bengals-Browns game. Parcells will return to the studio when our friend uh, Paul McGuire returns to the broadcast booth. And Paul watching up in Buffalo today and... Uh, Best wishes to him as he recovers from a heart attack and bypass surgery. And speaking of milestones, Pete Carroll, as they measure for the Bills' first down, and it's just inches short, Pete Carroll celebrating his 40th birthday today. And so far, it's been a pleasant, pleasant one for the defensive coordinator of the Jets, trying to rally his troops for one more stand here late in the second quarter. Well, you can probably tell Pete Carroll really has a lot of time today to celebrate his birthday as there is a lot of work at hand. Fourth and inches for the Buffalo Bills who huddle up on this play. Something we don't see them do often these days. Excuse me, third and inches, third and inches. And Carwell Gardner dives for the Bill first down. He's inside the 30 down to the 29-yard line. And a timeout taken by the Buffalo Bills with 106 left in the first half. Pete Carroll trying to hold off the Bills in the latter stages of the opening half with the Jets leading 10-3. Leading time of possession in the game so far. Brian still nursing a bruised left shoulder, but expected to return. And the Bills now threatening after this play. This play set up the excellent field position. That was the interference call on Stargell. It was close, but nevertheless, it was interference. Kelly in the shotgun. First down play from the Jet 28. In the flat, Thurman Thomas goes one-on-one, -on -one, eludes one tackler, and then ducks out of bounds in front of Mo Lewis. Bills still with two. Timeouts remaining. Jets with a full complement of three. 101 on the clock, second quarter. Bills looking to tie before oh, halftime. You know, I believe these Bills have scored seven touchdowns and nine times. They're inside the 20. It's an outrageous number. Kelly looked one way, comes the other under pressure. Thomas comes back to make a great catch in front of Kyle Clifton. There's the classic coming back to the football. And the classic linebacker eyeing Thomas and not turning his head around. Kelly under heavy pressure. Look, Clifton is in position, but doesn't get his head turned around quickly enough. Smartly 
taken out of bounds by Thomas to stop the clock. Inside the 20 yard line, the Bills have been dynamite. They have it now inside the 20. Second down. Kelly for the end zone, wide open, Reed. He scores. Andre Reed, Coslett knows he can't shut down Marv Levy's offense. He just wants to slow him down a little bit. That time, Reed was in a foot race with Hasty, and Reed left Hasty at the line of scrimmage. Had Hasty in pursuit from the get-go, and Kelly hit him right in the numbers. Third touchdown catch of the season for Andre Reed, the 41st of his career. And now Scott Norwood with the extra point to tie the game with 49 seconds left in the first half. And the game tied after that seven-yard touchdown pass from Kelly to Andre Reed. Reed in the middle of the screen simply runs an out pattern. Number 40 on the right will come into play, but way late. You see Hasty's in the catch-up position. Could not make the play. You watch Andre Reed right here. Hasty's going to try and get out there, but he'll be in a chase position from the get-go. Cannot catch up to him. Too deep. Hasty was lined up too deep that time to take away that short out pattern for the touchdown. Once again, Kelly with pretty good pass protection back there, but it's a quick hitting pass. And look at that separation between Reed and Hasty. Just too much room given up by Hasty down at the goal line. And the game tied at 10 with just 49 seconds left in the second quarter after that Buffalo drive, which covered 80 yards and only a minute, nine seconds, and six plays. Stay with us at halftime. The Domino's Pizza NFL Live Halftime Report with Messrs. Costas, McDonough, and Simpson coming up shortly. Key play in that drive was the interference call against Tony Stargell of the Jets, and it was a close call. Mathis and Odegaard deep to receive the kickoff. And Delucio sends it to the goal line. Mathis. Terrence Mathis with a seam down the sideline. Good field position for the Jets. They'll start in Bill territory, and a flag comes down. It could be even more. Jones and Hicks finally got Mathis down as he was streaking up the right sideline for a 50-yard return. And that's just why the Bills... Personal foul. 15 yards face mask now. Number five. On the kicking team. 15 yards. First down. A good gap on the left side of your screen. Then you'll see Deluiso get in there and get a hand on that face mask. And they're going to give him 15 yards because that is a blatant penalty. You see, Deluiso didn't let go of that face mask. Once he had it, he kind of held on to it a bit too long. I know it's an accident. Players get their hands up there and their fingers get caught. But as soon as that hand gets in there, you must let go. And Deloiso did not let go quickly enough. Ken O'Brien has returned at quarterback for the Jets with 41 seconds left in New York with a first down at the Bill 35-yard line. O'Brien suffering a bruised left shoulder on a previous series, the last time the Jets had the ball, but they need him back in there. That's the kind of day he's had. Well, O'Brien has three timeouts. And the play is being reviewed. I don't know what they're reviewing. Well, maybe the yardage situation. The play stands. Okay, the play stands for Bruce Coslett and his team to take over. They have 41 seconds left and three timeouts to work with. So the Jets can get in better field goal position, possibly even get the touchdown. 10-10 game, 41 seconds left in the first half. O'Brien retreats to go to the air. Man wide open is Toon. Al Toon to the 17-yard line. I don't know why they don't call a timeout, why they're wasting time. They needed to call timeout right away. They finally stopped the clock with 31 seconds left after O'Brien shakes off the injury and comes right back to hit Al Toon for 18 yards and a jet first down. A big play, a nice gainer. Right there's Al Toon. He'll hook up in the middle of the field in between a couple of bills and then turn and head upfield. Now, the reason I was saying, all right, O'Brien, call timeout now. Call timeout now. 
but they wasted about five seconds on the clock. It may not mean anything on this drive, but then again, five seconds can be real important. Well, next Saturday, NBC's coverage of all the thrills and excitement of Notre Dame football continues as the Irish host the Michigan State Spartans. Remember last year, uh, the Irish prevailed in their game against Michigan State on a deflected pass. They went into the hands of Adrian Gerald on the Michigan State two-yard line. That play then set up the Irish winning TD with 34 seconds left as they pulled it out 20 to 19. That's Notre Dame, Michigan State. Two timeouts left for the Jets, 31 seconds remaining. They try to recapture the lead before intermission. Ball at the 18 of the Bills, first down. Four wides in the game. O'Brien had it tipped, it falls incomplete. The Bills putting pressure on O'Brien came with a blitz that time, and Kirby Jackson got in there. Also, the cornerback fooled the Jets, uh, maybe, but Costlett had an open receiver, had the ball not been tipped at the line of scrimmage by a smart defensive player. <laughs> Bruce Costlett there with uh, Browning Nagel, the Jets rookie quarterback, who is their second round draft choice. Ryan's second down pass tipped and falls incomplete off the hands of Al Toon, who was wrapped up by Mark Kelso. 25 ticks left. That's Freeman McNeil shaken up. And the Jets precariously fear that running back. There's Freeman McNeil right there trying to pick up the blitzer. You see he gets his head turned a little bit. I think he may have gotten a finger in his eye. It appeared that time that Clifford Hicks stuck his finger up around the face mask and got Freeman McNeil's right eye. Of course, this is an injury timeout, so it's a charge timeout, and the Jets are down to their final timeout with 25 seconds left. The clock would have stopped on an incomplete pass. Watch Hicks's right hand here, folks. It gets right in the face mask area and turns Freeman McNeil's head and I believe touched his eye a bit. It's painful as heck to have a finger stuck in your eye. Mm. Great balance in the Jet offense in the first half. McNeil has rushed for 42 yards as the Jets have rushed 18 times for 86 yards. O'Brien has passed 18 times, completing 12 for 160 yards. Rushing defense of the Bills has been a problem all season long. Well, in two games, you know, Miami was able to run the ball. Some Miami did a good job. And, of course, last week, Pittsburgh ran. But you Bills folks remember Bruce Smith's not in there. Jeff Wright's not in there. You don't have your defense out there at 100% capacity. So I don't think this defense has anything to be ashamed of by giving up those rushing yards. McNeil getting the eye test you can see how cloudy that right eye is it's already bloodshot from the finger to the eye Freeman is tough though huh he wants to know why they didn't call face mask penalty and I would think because they didn't see the hand of Hicks go to Freeman McNeil's face then the uh, number one jet rusher for eight of his ten previous years in the league in fact eight straight years that ended in 1989 Freeman McNeil was the top ground gainer for New York. Freeman's like a Rolls Royce, boy. It just keeps right on running, Jack. Now O'Brien faces a third and 10 from the Bill 18, already in field goal range. One timeout left. You see the clock. Burkett. Flag down. Burkett down at the 8. Tackled by Nate Odom. Jets used their last time out, but there was a penalty marker on the play. It came in the secondary on the other side of the field. Holding against the Bills. That'll be an automatic first down with just 21 seconds left. Marv Levy wants uh, the explanation. He says, no way. Well, the key here will be, was that completion enough for a first down? If not, the Jets... We have to check with the measurement to see if a first down is made. 
Okay, that's right. Otherwise, the Jets can decline the penalty. If this is a first down, the Jets will decline the penalty, take the ball where it is. And if it's not a first down, the Jets will take the penalty and have an automatic first down. And because of the penalty, they won't be charged with that timeout. It's just short. Cosler saying that's, that's a first down. Yes, well, if they accept the holding penalty, defensive holding gives first down. Here's O'Brien taking another hit by Dr. Sack Seals. So the defensive hold, five yards and a first down from the previous spot is accepted. Five yards stepped off, automatic first down, still one timeout left. And 21 seconds, and from this area of the field, you could run three plays anyway in 21 seconds. First down at the Bill 14, 10-10 tie. some tight coverage from James Williams. Good pressure by the Bills pass rush that time. Forcing O'Brien out of the pocket. Forcing O'Brien to throw when he didn't want to. See, Brian gets back there, and now he's going to get pressure from the inside. Cornelius Bennett and Lodish. There's a receiver open to O'Brien's right. He passes him up and tries to get it in the end zone. Terrence Mathis appeared to be open in front of Toons, but O'Brien tried to get that touchdown. Second down from the Bill 14. 14 seconds left. Blitz. Ball knocked down. Kirby Jackson came on a corner blitz and knocked the pass away. That's the second time that's happened. 12 seconds left. It'll be third and 10. Pretty good protection except for Kirby Jackson. 47 on the other side of the screen. Gets his hand up and deflects that pass. Another good defensive play by the Bills. What do you call here? Third and 10 from the 14 and only 12 <laughs> seconds left. Well, you have one timeout left. So you can try to run a sucker draw of some kind. Even a screen play to set up the field goal. This is third down. You can complete something in the middle of the field and still use your timeout. Brian has misfired on his last four pass attempts. For the end zone, in the corner, tight coverage, and intercepted. Intercepted by Williams, a costly mistake by O'Brien. It cost them a chance for the field goal. The Jets were looking at a cinch field goal to take the lead before halftime, and O'Brien threw it right into the teeth of coverage, and it will go for no points after the Jets had a golden opportunity. But James Williams, number 31, is in excellent position over there. O'Brien didn't get enough air on this ball. He's trying to throw it up in the air and let his tall receiver get up there and get after it. But James Williams, beautiful position that time to make the interception. See, had the ball been laid up, Moore may have had a chance, but that is just excellent defensive coverage. What about O'Brien's decision to throw it into that coverage? It's a bad pass. I don't mind his decision to go over there and give his receiver a chance one-on-one, -on -one, but you've got to lay the ball up higher to utilize the height of Moore. And the Buffalo Bills saw their chances to go into the locker room behind, taken away by the interception. We get ready to start the third quarter of play from Giant Stadium at the Meadowlands. Welcome back, Tom Hammond and Joe Namath. Joe, that uh, half ended on, on a disastrous play for the New York Jets, who were in cinch field goal range with a chance to take the uh, lead at halftime, and Ken O'Brien decided to throw this one into the end zone. Well, I'll tell you, as a quarterback, this is like the worst thing you can do, take your team away from a scoring position. It's a fine play over there by James, but as a quarterback, you want to make sure not to turn the ball over here. O'Brien decided decided to go to Rob Moore, lay the ball up high, and he just didn't get it up high enough. James made a great play. Was it to do for the confidence of O'Brien and for his entire offensive team that it played so well in that first half? Oh, they played well in an interception like that that Williams made. You see, what it does is it takes that momentum away from the Jets that they would have had going in at halftime. That has spent that last 20 minutes being up and excited about other, uh, another Leahy field goal or touchdown, but instead it's the Bills that are in the locker room at halftime saying, all right, we're fired up now. It's 10-10 and we played our worst. The second half, we're going to go out and get him. Well, the New York Jets have dominated the statistics in the first half, even though the score is tied at 10-10. 
And as you see our Coors Light halftime stats, look at the time of possession, nearly 21 minutes for the New York Jets to uh, just over nine for the Buffalo Bills. And total yards, 241 for New York, 130 for Buffalo. And the game plan for the Jets was to play a little ball control and to keep that no-huddle offense of Jim Kelly and company off the field. And for the most part, they've done that. In fact, the Buffalo Bills touchdown was largely a result of an interference call that was a very close call. Oh, Stargio played the ball nicely, and uh, an official called interference on Stargio from the other side of the field. And, hey, it's a good break for the Bills, a bad break for the Jets. The bottom line is the Bills and Jets are tied, folks, and that's all that matters. Forget about time of possession, penalties, and all that stuff. The first half was even. This will decide the game, the second half. Daloiso with a kick right to the goal line. Kick coverage has been a problem the last few games for the Bills. This time it's pretty good as Odegaard returns the kick to about the 20-yard line where he's stopped by Steve Tasker, the special teams par excellence performer for the Buffalo Bills who has been to the Pro Bowl as a special teams performer. And Joe, in that phase of the game, nobody does it better. Nobody does it better. That's right. Tasker not only hustles downfield hard, but he has a knack of playing off blockers, throwing his body recklessly to the ball carrier. In fact, it was Tasker that caused the problem on that blundered punt that the Jets had earlier. Tasker was right down there in excellent position on Mathis and Mathis had to worry about Tasker being there and I think that's why he dropped that one punt. Tasker has his old TV show back in Buffalo. You see the numbers on Ken O'Brien in the first half. The interception though very costly. It cost the Jets at least three points in the lead. Blair Thomas with the first carry of the second half and gets only a yard or so as Cornelius Bennett homes in on the football and makes the tackle. Well, Cornelius Bennett at 97, nobody touches him. Chris Dressel, 84, cannot make the cutoff block on their quick, speedy Bennett. Bennett just hustles right across there and runs down the ball carrier from behind. Not many linebackers come in this kind of a package. The enthusiasm and the physical ability to go along with it. Biscuit, Cornelius Bennett, now in his fifth year out of Alabama. One of the top players in the game. Draw play, nothing for Blair Thomas. Once again, Cornelius Bennett is all over the ball carrier. Well, he got there faster than Dave Cadigan, for example, expected. What, you'll see Cadigan 66 taking an angle to block Bennett, but Bennett's already three yards across the line of scrimmage. Most defensive players are still in the area shallower than that where Cadigan normally could block, but not Bennett. He's too quick, he's fast, he's aggressive. Somebody's gonna have to block Cornelius Bennett. It's third down and 10 for the Jets. They have wide receivers, three of them to the right. O'Brien in trouble, hit from behind. The ball is loose, and the Bills have it. It's ruled Buffalo's football, a fumble. O'Brien says his arm was going forward. Bob McElwee says Buffalo's football. Cornelius Bennett all over the field on the first three plays of the second half. Mike Lotus was the man that knocked it free, and Bennett came up with it. Second sack of O'Brien and the football to Buffalo. And good coverage downfield for the Bills. You folks at home decide, was this ball going forward? Is it an incomplete pass or a fumble? Here he can't find anyone, and now Lodish is coming around in the back door. Watch Lodish. He hits that ball. That looks like fumble to me. It looks like Lodish knocked that ball loose before O'Brien's arm was going forward. The play will be reviewed. And the play is being reviewed, as we were sure it would be. Norm Cragseth is the replay official. Mike Lodish, number 73, who says his biggest asset is keeping that motor going, man. He has a great opportunity playing out there now because of the injuries to Wright and Smith, and he said he's going to make the best of it. Take another look at it. I don't think the ball ever gets going forward here. That ball's tipped out of his hands while it's back. I don't think we're going to see this overruled. I think we'll see the Bills have the ball. Well, we had a play like this, similar to this, reviewed earlier. Was it a forward pass or was it a fumble? Fumble was ruled in that case. The field uh, officials ruled it a fumble. After further review, case. the play stands. First down. And as you said, Joe, it is ruled a fumble, and it will be Buffalo's ball. First down at the 16-yard line of the Jets. Now, is this where the Jets, after playing a great game to this point, start to come apart? 
We will find out. The defense has their back to the goal line. The Bills only 16 yards away. Kelly across the middle, incomplete off the hands of Andre Reed, who took a tough hit from Mo Lewis. Mo Lewis, number 57, the rookie linebacker from Georgia, who earned a starting spot in the preseason for the Jets. Overall SEC player, led Georgia in tackles as a senior. And Bruce Coslett said of Mo Lewis, he'll turn some heads in his rookie year before it's over. Second and ten. Again, Kelly across the middle, and again, broken up. Kyle Clifton made a pass at it and might have just tipped it away from the intended receiver, Thurman Thomas. That reminded me of an old linebacker we had named Al Atkinson who tipped the pass in the Super Bowl that went a ride way intercepted. Let's see if you can see Clifton get a hand on that ball. Nope. I think Clifton may have gotten a hand on the ball and knocked the flight off just a little bit. And Thomas couldn't make the adjustment. Third and ten from the 16. Again, Kelly this time has his man. And it is Andre Reed that is spun out of bounds close to the first down marker by Hasty in Washington. I don't think he got enough. And so Carroll's defense holds Buffalo out of the end zone. They'll settle for a Scott Norwood field goal attempt. Earlier in the game, Norwood had his career high of 52-yard field goal. This one will be about 26 yards. Norwood in the first game of the season against Miami missed a 25 yarder. This one officially is 25 yards. And Scott Norwood for the first time today gives Buffalo the lead. The Bills take advantage of a New York fumble to go up by three. By Domino's Pizza. Nobody knows like Domino's how you like pizza at home. By Right Guard Sports Stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. And by Hertz. We never forget who made us number one. We're Hertz. We're America's wheels. From Giant Stadium, Tom Hammond and Joe Namath. As Brad Daloiso kicks off for the Bills, taken by Terrence Mathis about two yards deep. Mathis upended balls to the 20-yard line. And there is Tasker once again to make the tackle for the Buffalo Bills. Well, tonight is premiere night for our NBC Entertainment. And it begins at 7 o'clock Eastern time with the adventures of Mark and Brian. You guys taking on the adventures of a lifetime in that show. Then the show the critics call the best new program of the season, Erie, Indiana. And two great comedies with two great stars. James Garner, a con man politician you'll love to hate, man of the people. Then Robert Guillaume stars in Pacific Station, capped off by John Ritter in the box office hit Problem Child, a network premiere movie. A night of premieres tonight on NBC. I tell you, I'm looking forward to seeing James Gardner. Heck, I remember watching him in that old Maverick series when I was just a boy, and I just like watching Big Jim. He's a golfing partner here, isn't he? Yes, he is. First down for the Jets. For the first time today, they are behind Buffalo. Play action pass, and the pass is dropped by Ken Wisenhunt, who was wide open, perhaps just a little out of his grasp, but that's a catch that Wisenhunt has to make. Oh, you're right, Tom. O'Brien did a good job of getting the ball around Cornelius Bennett, who distracted O'Brien a bit. You'll see O'Brien just get that ball around Bennett, and Wisenhunt should make this catch. Yeah, we don't see the end of it, but that ball should have been caught. Ken O'Brien's last six passes going back to the first half have fallen incomplete or intercepted. The action. Just a little play action fake here. It's going to slow down the Bills a little bit. They honor that fake, and O'Brien has a beautiful pocket to throw from at Al Toon, the whole middle of the field. Nate Odoms makes the play, but you can see how much room Nate Odoms is giving Al Toon. He, it's, he really respects the speed that Al Toon's have. Almost a late hit there by Leonard Smith. Toon's fifth reception of the day for 64 yards. off to Johnny Hector makes a couple of nice moves and takes it to midfield a gain of nearly 10 yards before he's tackled by Leonard Smith and Darrell Talley here's our Hertz 10 minute ticker 
The late game's in progress. Raiders continue to shut out the Colts. Same score, Denver over Seattle. Broncos have been playing well in the early season. San Diego now within three, playing at home against the Falcons. And here at the Meadowlands, Buffalo leading New York 13 to 10. You see the time remaining in the third quarter. The Jets will be without Freeman McNeil for the remainder of the game. He carried eight times for 42 yards, including a touchdown. He has a bruised right eye and will not return. Second in a yard for O'Brien. Hands it to Blair Thomas. Thomas picking his way forward and is thrown back by Carlton Bailey. Nice tackle by Bailey, the four-year veteran out of North Carolina who started six games a year ago and now has moved into a regular starting spot for the Bills. Let's take a look at Cornelius Bennett here. He's going to be blocked by Chris Dressel, number 84, who's staying right in front with Bennett. Now Bennett gets a little upset with uh, Dressel cutting his legs a little bit. And <laughs> I tell you, Dressel just looked like he gave it good effort, and Bennett didn't like any part of it. <laughs> tackles and two assists for Cornelius Bennett who personally disrupted that last New York Jet drive and recovered a fumble. Play action pass on first down. And it is Chris Dressel that makes it a four yard gain to the 45 of the Bills. Shane Conlon wraps him up there. Well, Bruce Coslett's team sees seems to have their composure you know when you have that turnover at the end of the first half and then another turnover where the Bills went ahead 13 to 10 it can rattle the team but the offensive unit of the Jets right now seem to be putting together another fine drive they're at the 45 just inside it of the Buffalo Bills Walt Corey has been trying to rally his defense all day against the ball control play of the New York Jets points are what count of course and right now the Jets trail by three off to Baxter. Brad Baxter tugs ahead close to a first down inside the 40 of the Bills. Leon Seals and Mike Lodish combining on the hit for Buffalo. Well, I'll tell you, this Jets offensive line is doing some job up front. Dave Cadigan and Jim Sweeney, White. I tell you, they look at the hole. I mean, there's a stand-up. Cadigan's pushing his man downfield. They're five yards downfield. 69 Criswell is five, six yards downfield. A great surge by the offensive line of the Jets. And they're going against the Bills' defensive front that shows three down linemen right now. Lodish, Hanson, and Seal. The Bills opened up with that second defense. Two down linemen and five linebackers. They've gone to three down since the Jets have been moving the ball on the ground. O'Brien to the airway. Complete the two. Now Toon spun down after he makes another first down catch. J.D. Williams been victimized a couple of times by O'Brien and Toon today. Well, the play action fake holds the defense. O'Brien's a little late getting the ball out there. Toon was open for a while, and James Williams does recover to keep it to about an eight or nine yard gain. But this offense of the Jets is looking sharp. Toon, six catches for 77 yards. James Williams, the man that had the interception, killing the jet drive just before halftime. But Tim has made some catches on him today as well. All at the 26. Baxter, not much there. Cornelius Bennett in there to get a piece of it. And Leon Seals also there to wrap it up. Big Leon Seals that time. Sure, he was the first guy there, number 96. No one had a good block on him. He just played off whomever tried to get him. 96, right in the middle of your screen, right there. White tried to get him. The old road grader, number 67, and then he left him, and Seals played off the block and was the first one there. Dwayne White, the offensive right guard of the Jets, number 67. In his second year out of Alcorn State, they call him the road grader. He weighs about 320 pounds. They said the coaches want him on slim fast and said but when he weighed 320 slim fast is not the answer you see that he's opened up some holes for that rushing game the new york attack today blair thomas lowers his head and pounds to the bill nine yard line 14 yard gain
watch these linemen. There's already a big hole in here, but they wall this thing off, and there's no one out there. There's a huge natural hole on the left side. Thomas breezes through it quickly. No doubt the Bills were expecting a pass that time, and the Jets crossed them up by throwing Thomas through the hole quickly. Walt Corey, his defense ranked last in the league against the rush. And on the 10th play of the drive, first and goal just inside the 10. Baxter, nowhere to go. Did he fumble the ball? Still no signal. It'll be the Jets' ball. New York retains possession after the Baxter fumble. They'll spot it at the five-yard line. Jeff Criswell recovered the fumble for the Jets. Good effort by Baxter making what he did out of that play because Leon Phil once again did a good job of playing off the blocker and getting good penetration, but Baxter was able to shake him and fight forward for extra yards. Baxter playing with a quad muscle injury. And now the official signal a timeout. Look at Chris Dressel. He likes that signal. You see, he's giving it that pump. He's telling the referee, hey, fix the clock. That's... That's a reset the play clock signal. Yeah, there's Dressel. He wants to help out. Fumble was ruled on the field. Recovered what we gonna do? Back it up at the five-yard line. Play is being reviewed. Can't really see when the fumble, when the ball comes out. So the spot of the football, the only thing in question here, and being ruled a fumble in this case would be in favor of the Jets. They'll get another couple yards out of it. And the thing is, from the angle we just saw, you can't conclusively tell me whether Baxter's knee was down or not. And that's the key here. Did Baxter's knee hit before he fumbled the ball? Or was he, in fact, still in the air, causing the fumble or having a legitimate fumble? I'd like to get another look at that from a different angle, but I don't know whether we can tell. You tell me now, is Baxter going to be down before he fumbles the ball? This is what they have to try to figure out. Review, the play stands. And on that view, given us by uh, Larry Cirillo and Peter Blechner, our producer and director, it looked like the ball did come out before Baxter was down. So it'll be second and goal. Marv Levy trying to hold off the Jets. The ball on the five-yard line. Eight possessions, two touchdowns, four field goals today. One each, and then that costly interception just before halftime. Second and goal from the five. Hector in motion. O'Brien pass quickly to Thomas. Touchdown. touchdown pass of the season and the Jets recapture the lead a hundred ten touchdown passes now for Ken O'Brien tying him with Richard Todd for second on the list as the Leahy point after is good the leader in touchdown passes Joe Namath of the New York Jets Shades of Joe Willie today as the Jets playing up to some of their great teams of old. There's the all-time leader, and O'Brien looks like name up on this one as the Jets bounce back in front. Wild scene at the stadium while we were away. The fans going absolutely bonkers as the Jets have taken a four-point lead on the Buffalo Bills. O'Brien's first touchdown pass of the season. Aguiar with a kickoff. Touchback, and the Bills will take over at the 20. Ken O'Brien to Blair Thomas has given the Jets the lead. Thomas takes it across the goal line, and once more, the Jets in front. We'll show you why this play works. He'll stay right here. Kelso will take this motion man. Now Carlton Bailey's going to be asked to cover this pass. He can't get over there fast enough to do it. Watch how this thing de develops. 
Bailey's in a foot race with Thomas, and there's no way he can get over there to stop that play. And it capped an 80-yard jet drive. O'Brien with a touchdown pass. Now the Bills take over. They've been held to 136 yards so far in this game after over 1,100 in their first two outings of the season. And New York has run 52 plays to 29 on this one. Thurman Thomas for 11 yards and a Bill first down. Bumped out of bounds by Mo Lewis. And just when you count the Bills out, of course, they get that runaway train that is the no-huddle offense chugging again. I don't know that we're going to count these Bills out, Tom, anytime. Check this time of possession. It's rather one-sided, but the score is only four-point difference, folks. Kelly, screen pass to Thomas. Thomas with a nice run, and then we got nine yards, and... So the Bills biting off huge chunks of yardage here as they take over after the kickoff. Hurts, 10-minute ticker. Raiders on their way to victory. Denver in front, and Atlanta still leading at San Diego. Lonnie Young shaken up on the play. Young, who came over from the Phoenix Cardinals in a trade in the offseason, and told us yesterday he was very happy to be with his New York Jet Club. There he is, number 31. He did a great job in the preseason. He beat out Eric McMillan, the two-time Pro Bowl performer. Some job by Young. Of course, this is his seventh season in the NFL. Young is no rookie, folks. He's been playing football and playing well for Phoenix. And the Jets were able to get him. And in training camp, hey, that's what happened. They just uh, decided that Young beat, beat uh, McMillan out. There it is, 159 yards today after they had averaged 559 in their first two games. Third straight time he touches the ball. He only needed a yard, and that's about all he gets, but it will be enough for a first down. Kyle Clifton at the bottom of the stack for the Jets. Well, you know what, though, Tom? Clifton and the Jets are playing well, no doubt about it. The Bills have to feel, though, they're playing their worst offensive football to this day. Granted, Pete Carroll's defense is causing a lot of that, but I know that Jim Kelly and this Buffalo Bill offense, they're really not shaking right now. They feel like they have to. James Lofton, I think that's his first reception of the day. Second one, second catch by Lofton. Elliot Kalb, our statistician with the call there as he broke in front of Tony Stargell. Watch how Lofton keeps his feet inbounds, folks. I mean, he's an acrobat. Look at this. That's just beautiful. 35-year-old, 14-year veteran. From Here's Thurman Thomas almost broke it. Tripped up at the 30-yard line after a 12-yard gain. Tony Stargell got a hand in there to make the saving tackle. And Thomas, who is a series of nagging injuries, looks a little shaken up as he leaves the field. Replaced by Kenneth Davis. Davis in his sixth year out of TCU, second leading rusher for the Bills. Kelly wide open. BB out of bounds with a first down. Don Beebe's first catch of the day after he had four touchdown receptions a week ago. He suddenly became a media darling. He answered more questions than Clarence Thomas last week. He was suddenly thrust into the spotlight. Looks like Lagerman may be down on the field with an injury. He's holding his right knee. You can see number 56 injure that right knee. Let's see what happens here. Does he twist it, get it bumped, or what? Right here, he gets a little kick in the ankle and then goes down. Doesn't appear to be serious. Let's hope it's not. One thing the Jets have done during this drive, Tom, it's been a very efficient drive for the Bills. As Lagerman gets up and seems to be moving around okay. The Bills have been patient in taking the shortstop. They've had some good runs by Thomas in there. Then Kelly's been hitting the short receivers. Thomas, B.B. Lofton on the outs. The Jets are sticking with their plan and trying to stop Marv Levy's team from getting the long, quick scores. They're making the Bills run a lot of plays, use the clock, and see just how patient Mr. Kelly can be. Darrell Davis replaces Jeff Lagerman in the Jet defensive line in his second year out of TCU. 12th round draft choice. First down for Kelly. Chase, out away from one man. And tosses it out of the end zone. 
Mark Gunn nearly sacked Kelly, but he was able to elude the rookie from Pitt and threw it away. But tell you, Kelly wanted to get that ball to Andre Reed over the middle, but Mo Lewis, the linebacker from the Jets, was right in there along with Clifton, and they had that middle covered well. And Kelly did a good job buying a lot of time. He just couldn't find an open receiver because of the good covering. Thurman Thomas back in, gets the handoff, tries to bounce it outside, being chased by Hasty and forced out of bounds. No gain on the play. Thurman Thomas couldn't turn the corner. Well, Hasty made a good move out there with his speed. Hasty never let him have the corner. In fact, a loss of a yard. Good play by Hasty against the run. He's one of the best one-on-one -on -one pass defenders in the league. Kelly, plenty of time, then gets away from the sack, finally wrapped up. Daryl Davis, who came in to replace Logaman, will get Kelly to the turf. I tell you how loose Jim Kelly is. He wanted to throw that one left-handed. He changed hands when they grabbed his right hand. He went to his left and wanted to get it. You watch Jim Kelly. Is he a gambler? Is he trying to do anything he can to get this job done? He doesn't quit. Doesn't ever show any quit. Watch him. He'll go to his left hand. Yeah, I'm going to throw it somehow and get it completed. But the Jets defense is in there. And another Jet is down at the moment. And it might be Daryl Davis who got credit for that sack, and he had replaced the injured Jeff Logaman. 98 is Daryl Davis. So the defensive ends for the Jets now down to two, Washington and Gunn, if Logaman and Davis are out. I tell you, the Jets secondary took the receivers away from Kelly. He says, boo, you got to go this way, Andre, or whatever. Kelly's not happy with the situation. It appears maybe there was some communication problems. It looked like it was excellent coverage back there in the Jets secondary. Kelly has a, a reward going for his receivers, $100 when they catch a touchdown pass. Last night, he took uh, all his offensive linemen out to dinner, had the limos pull up to the hotel and load them in. But this third game of the season has not been as impressive a performance for Kelly in that high-powered Buffalo offense as they had in the first two games. There's Davis leading the field. and. Apparently uh, only temporarily shaken up. Kelly has hit 16 of 23, 151 yards, one uh, touchdown, and one interception. Scott Norwood will attempt a 43-yard field goal. He's made two today from 25 and 52 yards. Frank White, the holder. Norwood's kick is good. Scott Norwood from 43 yards draws the Buffalo Bills within one. 17-16, Jets leading 224 in the third. Scott Norwood began the season in a slump, but has kicked three field goals today, and he's happy to be back. He's happy. I tell you, he was going from taking a whip to being a, I don't know, pretty demonstrative uh, kind of guy with these fans here in New York. Do you think he's thinking of the New York Giants fans or he has them mixed up with the Jet fans, huh? <laughs> Here's a return by Mathis. And uh, it's across the 30-yard line. Good return by Mathis. Bruce Coslett with some final words for Ken O'Brien. This is the bench watching that Norwood field goal attempt. 25 yards on the return. <laughs> uh, how much did he make it by though huh let's see a uh, uh, nice kick up uh, yeah sure a nice kick he said you made it by that much that's all it takes though huh it's on the scoreboard 17 16 last time the jets had the ball they drove 80 yards for the go-ahead touchdown blair thomas trying to get a block on the corner back to the 27-yard line. Ray Bentley wasn't going for the blockers, wasn't going for the fakes. He made the tackle. Bentley, the author, he writes Darby the Dinosaur children's books. And he did look kind of like a brontosaurus. There. He likes to paint his face. Do you see that black under his eyes? That's all part of the image, isn't it? 
Well, I think that helps keep the glare from the lights out of his eyes. But he, <laughs> that time, he did a wonderful job of playing off Baxter, who was out there trying to block Bentley. Bentley wouldn't have any of it. He just played him to the ground and made the play. Awesome three by Blair Thomas. Ryan in a hole now. The seat may go to the air. Maybe checking off. want an intentional grounding did he let it go to avoid the sack probably but it uh, looked good enough that it'll pass here's the Hertz 10 minute ticker still the Raiders the Broncos and the Falcons in command fourth quarter games here we're still in the third a minute 16 left and the Jets clinging to a one-point edge on the Buffalo Bills well, I look for them to try to hit Toon down there in the middle of the field. They've done it before. They stretch the defense out and then try to get Toon in the middle. It's going to take that much yardage for a first down. More Mathis and Toon set to the right. Six defensive backs for the Bills. O'Brien throws it short to Toon. And he is to the 35 and well short of first down yardage. Jackson and Smith made sure that that pass didn't click for the first. Oh, a nice team defense by the Bills that time. O'Brien didn't have as much time as he wanted. The Bills put pressure on, and then their coverage downfield was very good. Good defense by Cornelius Bennett and his men. So Aguiar is on the kick on fourth down for the New York Jets. That's Al Edwards deep for the Bills. by Aguiar. Edwards retreats to the 19. Can't get outside. The green shirt pounds all over him. There's a penalty marker on the play. Chris Burkett made the tackle. The kick covered 44 yards with a five-yard return. Necessary roughness, 87 on the kicking team. 15 yards from the end of the play, first down. Burkett twice in the kicking game has had costly penalties. Well, unnecessary roughness, let's see what it is. That's the face mask. Look at that hand right there. Let it go. Oh, see, again, I, when these players get called for that face mask penalty, Tom, they're not trying to grab the face mask. It's just your hand gets caught up. You're not supposed to put your hands up around the player's head. Whether you're blocking, tackling, you're going to call a penalty anytime that hand gets around the face head area. Jeff Lagerman twisted his knee, but he's back in the lineup on the defensive line for the Jets. Great field position for the Bills. First down at their own 40. They trail by one. Ernie Thomas. Fumble. Jets have it. Hasty recovers for New York. playing like their contender instead of Buffalo. Thomas has a handle on the ball, but when he gets up there in traffic, one of the Jets jarred it loose, and then Hasty smartly dives on it. Excellent field position for Ken O'Brien and his offense to begin. There's James Hasty with that fumble recovery for the Jets. And Marv Levy now sees his defense, his beleaguered defense, back on the field. First down New York from the Bill, 41. Two yards at most. Bill Hansen, the rookie defensive end. Marv Levy told us Hansen has the tools, just needs some experience. Chris Gressel, the tight end of the Jets, shaken up on the play, stopping the clock with just five seconds left in the third. Already Mark Boyer, the number one tight end of the Jets, unable to play today because of an injury. Now the number two man, Chris Gressel, down. Hope you'll join us next week. All the NFL action begins at 12.30 Eastern Time with NFL Live. And next week, the NFL Live will feature the Bill Parcells intra-squad game. G. Simpson will have some interviews with Bill Belichick and Ray Handley. And that's the lineup of games coming your way here on NBC. All starts at 12.30 Eastern Time next Sunday.
But you mentioned that Mark Boyer, the tight end of the Jets, is already injured. Now here's Chris Dressel, a backup tight end, often starts and plays a lot for the Jets. He's going off, but he's trotting, so he may be able to come back on the field. If he can't, it will hurt the Jets' offense severely because they do utilize a two tight end offense from time to time, even three tried tight ends. And the third quarter will come to an end. That's the end of the third quarter at Giants Stadium. 17-16, we'll be back after a word from your local station. From Giants Stadium, ready to start the fourth quarter with the Jets leading the Buffalo Bills 17-16. And it's been a festive day as the cheers have rained out throughout the game. Remember, though, the Jets in recent years have had trouble holding on to a lead. Through three quarters, though, they've been the dominant team in this one, holding the Bills to 191 yards total offense. Blair Thomas. No, Johnny Hector it was. Hector takes it for a first down, tripped up by Leonard Smith, but a 16-yard gain as the running game continues to click. Well, the Bills are playing an overshift defense with three down line, but you see Lodish and Seals, neither one of them were able to get off their blocks before Johnny Hector was through that hole into the secondary. Good quickness by Hector. And Hector and McNeil, before he was injured, despite their advanced years, <laughs> Gave the Jets a good running attack today, and uh, Baxter and Thomas, though banged up, have played well also. Bob Moore goes in motion. And O'Brien hands to Johnny Hector. Hector garners about three yards on that carry before he's tackled by Leon Seals with help from Phil Hansen. Coslett talking to Browning Nagel. The rookie quarterback with a little uh, what word of wisdom, Joe, a part of the learning process. Is that it? Oh, sure. Nagel's over there trying to pick up as much info as he can. And Costlet seems to be in a good mood because of field position and the score the way it is. Well, he was right about one thing. Whether he wins or not, his team was not intimidated by the Buffalo O'Brien rolls, tosses, complete to Blair Thomas. Short gain, only two or three yards. Shane Conlon wraps up Thomas, the two former Penn State stars colliding. Shane Conlon showing some good lateral movement and speed. Boy, he was ready to lay a lick down that time, and he did get a pretty lick on the receiver. He's coming off the field now as the Bills are going into their uh, prevent defense. Tom, what do they call this thing when they put all these other DB backs out there? Well, they call the uh, the special five linebacker defense the second, but for this, they just call it the dime, like most of every other team in the NFL. Six defensive backs. It's third and eight. Scrambling for yardage is Johnny Hector. I said third and eight, it was third and six. But even so, it will be a little short of the down marker. Now, Coslett with a decision to make on fourth down. Kick the field goal, go for the first down. He leads by one. Well, they're going to measure this. You know, Hector wasn't touched down. He fought his way forward along the ground, and they need to give him every bit of yardage that he got before he was touched down. Now, watch this. You're going to see Hector trip up on the Astro turf or whatever you want to call this thing. Now, he can keep fighting forward until that point right there. So this is going to be close. And you can see just how close it is inches short. What do you do? Well, they're going to go for the first down here. Costler wants to take it in. He wants to keep the ball and hopefully get a touchdown up there. The way his offensive line has been blocking, I don't blame him. A sure field goal here would give you a four-point lead, protect you from the Bills kicking one to win. So the Bills get all their beef up front in an attempt to stop this play fourth and inches. You could try to draw the Bills offside. That's one alternative. Never snap the ball because a five-yard penalty wouldn't hurt. Is that what happened? Bill Hansen came charging across. Was he drawn? False start. 69. Yes. Criswell called for the false start. That'll set him back five yards. Now you got to kick it. Mental errors. 
They're anxious. 69 on the right here. You see them just leaning a little bit. You cannot simulate the start of a play. Twice last week it happened to Criswell. Come on, Jeff. You got to think about things, buddy. You can't make those mental errors. And the Bills are happy to be able to get out of that situation. Now it's on Leahy's shoulder to get three points. And Pat Leahy will try a 39-yard field goal, which would give the Jets a four-point lead. 12-01 remaining in the game. And it's good. Pat Leahy kicks it through the uprights from 39 yards out to extend the Jets' lead to four. Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by the new Mazda. Mazda, it just feels right. By Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light, it doesn't get any better than this. By Castrol, engineered for today's smaller cars. And by Head & Shoulders, because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Could be the upset of the week. The New York Jets, more than a touchdown underdogs at home against the Buffalo Bills, leading 20-16. to 16. Aguiar to kick it off. is tripped up at the 29-yard line by Tony Stargell. And while we wait for the penalty to be sorted out, we will remind you that this is premier week on NBC, starting at 7 Eastern time, the adventures of Mark and Brian. Followed by Erie, Indiana, 7.30 p.m. Sort of a supernatural Walking twist. Walking below the waist, number 99 on the return team. You hear the penalty. And tonight's uh, NBC premiere week. Wrapping up with Sunday Night at the Movies and Problem Child, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Great night of entertainment coming your way on NBC. Jim Diopolis, the official there, talking to Marv Levy, the head coach of the Bills, who is uh, agitated to say the least. So this drive for the Buffalo Bills will begin from their own 15-yard line. 11.40 left in the game. New York Jets leading by four. Kelly in trouble. Sack. Scott. With the sack of Jim Kelly, the third sack by the Jets today. Mercer all over Kelly after Kelly couldn't get to a receiver over the middle of the field. The Jet linebackers took away Andre Reed once again. You see Kelly can't find the receiver. From the eight now, Kelly's pass wide open Lofton. And Lofton has a bill first down at the 28-yard line. The veteran James Lofton beat James Hasty, a man that he had praised yesterday when we talked to him. And that time, he takes it for 20 yards to get the Bills out of the hole. Kelly's pass falls incomplete, intended for Keith McKellar. Mo Lewis, the man that got a hand on that Kelly pass. As Jim calls his play again, he has a list of plays to choose from, and Marv Levy says... Kelly is even more focused now that he calls his own plays when he's getting ready for each game, setting those dates. Plenty of time, nobody open. Threw it away. Excellent coverage by the Jets downfield. Jim Kelly just can't find the open receiver because there aren't any. His offensive line is giving him time, and Kelly still can't get downfield because of the covery. Third and ten for the Buffalo Bills. Pete Carroll trying to rally that defense. Herman Thomas on a screen. Driven back after taking it close to the first down marker. It'll depend on the spot of the football here. Stopped at about the 39-yard line. And it may be close enough they'll have to measure. 
Marv Levy has still been raging all this series on the sideline. He's had mastery of the Jets, hasn't he? Calm and cool. <laughs> Bruce Coslett with nothing to lose, we might point out. Big underdogs in this game. They've played well. Well, they've already proven that they can compete out there. This has been a big lift for the Jets' defense. Just barely a first down on the effort by Thurman Thomas. So the Bills' drive remains alive. Fox shows 10-29. And New York leading Buffalo 20-16. And the Jets want to do more than just compete. They want to win. They feel like they can win, and they're ready. Thurman Thomas has nine catches for 80 yards. Kelly wide open to McKellar. The defender fell down, and McKellar takes it all the way to the Jet 34-yard line. Mo Lewis fell down. It goes for 27 yards. McKellar lost Lewis downfield because Lewis had fallen down in coverage. Good pass protection by that Bill offensive front once again. Spotted at the 35 of the Jets. Thurman Thomas, good blocking, cuts up and falls inside the 30 down to the 27-yard line. Bill Pickell and James Hasty tripping up Thurman Thomas. Once again, we look at that last play. McKellar comes off the line right here, and the linebacker is going to stay with him and fall down, and McKellar will break out wide open into the flat. There he is. The linebacker goes down. We have to be quick on the top straighter. Here's a blitz and a sack. It's Logaman. Logaman, who was shaken up earlier, <laughs> gets a bump from his teammate, Daryl Davis, but he was all over Jim Kelly. Big defensive play by Jeff Logaman. Another factor working in the Jets' defense, or in their favor, actually, for the defense, are these weather conditions. It's a cool day out there. This no-huddle offense isn't wearing down the Jets as much as it normally does. Third and 14, Kelly setting up a screen. Thurman Thomas with blockers. Stopped at the 30-yard line. He'll be five yards shy of first down territory. Hasty in Washington penetrating the blockers on the screen to make the first down saving tackle. Once again, the Jet defense has held Marv Levy's team. Pete Carroll says, we're not going to give up the long gainer. We won't allow Kelly to throw deep by keeping the receivers underneath us. We can hit them, maybe jar the ball loose. But let's make the Bills work for their yardage. Give them no huge gainers, and so far, it's worked. Scott Norwood, perfect today. This one, 46 yards. No good. Jets still lead by four. Coslet in the Jets, 20. Levy in the Bills, 16. The Jets have rushed for 146 yards against the Bills, who now have allowed 444 yards rushing in three games. Time of possession heavily in favor of the Jets. Eight and a half minutes left. They killed that much on a couple of drives today. O'Brien, on the receiver, fell down. He tried to find somebody downfield. No one was there, and then was going to lead Blair Thomas in the flat. And Thomas was tripped up. It'll go incomplete as we check all the scores now on our ITT 10-minute ticker. I've got to say that Miami-Detroit game's a surprise, huh? Denying Don Shula his 300th career win. Cleveland continues to be a surprise, and negatively, Cincinnati as well a surprise. 0-3, the Bengals. Atlanta's lead down to three at San Diego. Seals and Hansen on the stop for the Buffalo Bills as the Jets try desperately to hang on to this four-point lead. And they don't want to see Jim Kelly and the Buffalo Bills back out on the uh, field if they can help it. Clock still shows 8.05 and counting. Third and seven. 
inside eight minutes. Time of possession heavily in favor of the Jets. The prevailing wisdom on how to beat the Bills in a high-powered offense is to control the ball. The Jets have done it. Can they put the clinch on and win? Here's a sack. Coming with the rush is Daryl Talley for the third sack of the day against Jim O'Brien or Ken O'Brien. And Daryl Talley, who told us yesterday, he thinks he's underappreciated. He's not happy with his deal with the Bills, but he puts it out of his mind to just play football. He said he'd be rushing upfield. Something new for him today. There's Talley, 56, coming right up the middle. I can't say he's underrated anymore because he's a pro bowler and he's one of the most respected linebackers in the league. And man, he is eager. He loves to play this game. Over 30 sacks career now for Talley. As you look at Aguiar, who will kick it to Al Edwards. end Edwards retreats to his 30 turns the corner tries to pick up a wall of blockers and just knocked out of bounds at midfield almost broke it Edwards returns it 20 yards after the punt had covered 45 we'll be back and the Bills rally From Giants Stadium, the Jets leading the favorite Buffalo Bills, 20 to 16, 7 11 left. Welcome to those of you who have seen the Raiders blank the Indianapolis Colts. Jim Kelly in the Buffalo offense from midfield. There's Thurman Thomas with his 11th catch of the day. Mo Lewis makes the tackle on Thomas after he gains about six yards. Once again, the Jets are playing loose. They're forcing the Bills to throw the ball short. The Bills don't mind that as long as they keep moving the ball and get some points. Tom Hammond and Joe Namath at the Meadowlands where the Jets have controlled the football, keeping the Bills offense off the field for the most part. But they only lead by four. Thomas surrounded. Penalty marker down as they threw Thomas for a loss of two. But a flag on the play. Paul Fraze makes a big defensive play for the Jets. against the Bills. Coach Levy's got to be wondering what else can go wrong here. The Jets are shuffling some fresh defensive linemen in and out. Praise in their gun in there, the young rookie. They're keeping their defensive linemen fresh. Bruce Coslett's game plan has clicked Holding so number 67, offense, 10 yards, still second down. Pro center Kent Hall, the Mississippi cattle farmer, being called for the hold on that play. A costly penalty against the Bills. And uh, Buffalo, 55 yards in penalties. The Jets have weathered 104 yards in call. Second down and 15. Kelly flutters one, and it gets to the receiver. Good for a first down. That is James Lofton that makes the catch. That pass looked bad from the outset. It looked good in the stats as Kyle Clifton appeared to have a chance to intercept. It gets through to Lofton. Oh, reliable. Look at James hold on to that ball. He found a dead spot in that secondary, and Kelly delivered. Fourth catch of the day for the 35-year-old Lofton. First down, Bill. Kelly throws short. Tight end McKellar stopped for a gain of maybe a yard on the play. Well, it'll depend on where they mark his forward progress. They'll give him about a three-yard gain. James Hasty covering McKellar. Five forty left. Jets up. Twenty sixteen. Blitz. Kelly dumps it off to Wright. Wright with blockers on the screen gets it to the thirty. Only a gain of about a yard, a yard and a half. Logman and Washington getting to the flat quickly to break up the screen pass. Jim Kelly, who's had a bad left ankle, limping a little bit as he got up there. Here's a third down play, third and six. Kelly's pass, broken up, intended for Reed, James Hasty. Let me say he is as good as anybody in the league in man-on-man coverage. Great position on Andre Reed that time. I tell you, I'll be shocked if the Bills don't try a field goal here. Hasty makes a good play. But folks, there's five minutes left on the clock. The Bills are bound to get.
get the ball back. I don't understand why they don't go for the field goal on this play, knowing that they can get the ball back. Fourth and six for the Buffalo Bills, and Kelly calls for a timeout, and maybe they'll have second thoughts about going for it on fourth and six from the Jet 30-yard line. And even five minutes left in the game, and New York bidding for the upset, leading the Buffalo Bills 20 to 16. Reason I like the field goal here, Tom, they make the field goal. I know it's not guaranteed, but if they make the field goal, they're only one point down with about five minutes left in the game. Their defense, the Bills' defense has been doing all right. They stopped the Jets the last time. I think the Bills are going to get the ball back, and then they'd have an opportunity to win with another field goal. If the Bills don't pick this thing up right here and the Jets run some time off the clock, the Bills are going to be forced to score a touchdown because a field goal will not win the game for the Bills, nor even tie it. And, of course, uh, Scott Norwood missed his last field goal attempt. Perhaps that factors into the thinking. But James Hasty making a big defensive play on that third down pass. Here's what Bruce Coslett said to the New York media about James Hasty facing the Buffalo Bills. He doesn't quake in his boots for anybody. And he has gone against great players today. And he has risen to the challenge for the most part. High praise from Coach Bruce Coslett for James Hasty. Also, by the way, was praised for the opposition, the Bills. New York Goyer, Buffalo going for it. Fourth and six from the Jet 30. Jets lead 2016, five minutes left. Kelly's pass, complete. Lofton, first down, Buffalo. That's terrific. I mean, James Lofton and broke that thing to the outside. The timing by Kelly was near perfect. He went to the clutch man that time. Lofton makes the catch once again. Five receptions, 78 yards for Lofton. That was his biggest of the day. Spot the ball at the Jet 20-yard line. Clock shows four and a half minutes left. Bills looking for a go-ahead score. They trail by four. Kelly complete to Thomas. Just short of the 15-yard line, out of bounds by Lewis and Stargell. Thurman Thomas done most of his damage on the receiving end today. He is the NFL leader in yards rushing and receiving. That was his 12th catch for 99 yards. Very good read by Jim Kelly that time. A blitzer came unblocked, and Kelly quickly dumped the ball off to Thomas for the game. Let's take a look. You'll see the outside blitzer from Kelly's right coming clean, and Kelly will get rid of that ball just before the blitzer gets to him from the right side, right there. Good read by Jim Kelly. Meanwhile, Scott Mercero shaken up, giving Kelly a chance to come to the sideline. There's Mercero, that distinctive Mohawk haircut. And Mercero being tended to on the field. Let's go to Bob Costas for an update. Tom, the Broncos at one time had a 16-0 lead at home against Seattle. Seahawks have come back first a field goal, then Derek Fenner caps a drive, vaulting over from the one. Got about three minutes to go at mile high, and the Seahawks are within six at 16-10, Tom. Huh? All right, Bob, here at Giants Stadium, 418 left, and the Jets clinging to that 2016 lead, and the pressure on defensive coordinator Pete Carroll celebrating, we hope, or he hopes, <laughs> we don't know, but he hopes, his 40th birthday today. He'll celebrate it no matter what, but it could be a lot happier if his defense can hold off the Bills. Kelly has a second and five. Got three wides to the left. Kelly across the middle. Thomas for the touchdown. Turned down the field goal attempt, and sure enough, Kelly finds Thomas in the end zone for the six. What a weapon is Thurman Thomas, and Jim Kelly using him to good advantage today. Thomas has over 100 yards in receiving today, and has caught 13 passes. Here's Scott Norwood for the point after. And Norwood.
Wood is true with the point after touchdown. And the Buffalo Bills have taken a three-point lead on the New York Jets thanks to a touchdown reception by the incomparable Thurman Thomas. Well, here's the way it looks, folks. Thomas, who was lined up basically on the line of scrimmage here, just runs down here and finds an open spot. You see all the receivers up on the line of scrimmage. Now watch Thomas break right in the middle of the field. There's no one on him. There's a big hole, and Thomas makes the catch. Once again, good pass protection by Kelly right down the middle of the field in a huge hole. Thomas gets up in the air, twists around, and holds on to that rock. Well, the Bills just have so many weapons. Buffalo covering 49 yards in eight plays. Thurman Thomas with his 13th reception. A touchdown catch. Best in the business, receiving and running overall. And Jim Kelly, hottest quarterback in the National Football League, perhaps pulling out a victory coming from behind against the Jets today. There are the numbers on that scoring drive. It only took 257 to cover the 49 yards. Aloisa's kickoff to the goal line and Mathis. Terrence Mathis. Corralled and run out of bounds at about the 10-yard line. And the Bills' kickoff coverage, which had been poor the last couple of games, comes to the four in this situation, and the Jets are 90 yards away with just 402 remaining. Well, you know, if you're an offensive player. You don't mind this situation. You know what you have ahead of you. You've got to go ahead and get on the board. You're going to have four downs, basically, to get it done, unless the Jets use virtually no time at all. Coslin and O'Brien, I believe, will go to the four-down offense, knowing that they need to get the points on the board. For the Jets, this game has ominous similarities to a game they lost at Rich Stadium, dominating the game, running on the Bills at will. Johnny Hector, pretty determined run, but it only gets him a couple of yards. Carlton Bailey and James Williams finally getting Hector down. They'll mark it a gain of three. Raiders flanking the Colts are a winless. As Bob Costas told us, the Broncos lead now only six. And Atlanta goes into San Diego and beats the Chargers. Maybe Dan Henning and Ron Meyer, two of the coaches in trouble after today's results. Here, the Buffalo Bills have come from behind to take a three-point lead. Time running out on the Jets. Bob Moore stops, sets to the left. Play goes to the right. Blair Thomas cuts it back. Darts forward. They have the first down. He's almost to the 25-yard line. Three minutes remaining now. And uh, there is an injured Buffalo Bill player as the clock stops. 2.59 left. Well, those of you tuning in for NBC's Premier Week lineup, it'll be coming your way right after football. Premier Week on NBC starting with the adventures of Mark and Brian at the conclusion of the football game, followed by Erie, Indiana, Man of the People with James Garner, Fit Pacific Station, and the movie Problem Child. Premier lineup coming your way on NBC tonight, starting at the conclusion of the game. Today, I'm going to check out that Problem Child, too. I got Jessica at home who's five years old, and she's far from a problem, folks, but we may be able to learn something from this program. Have we gotten the uh, injured player yet? Still trying to identify the injured Buffalo Bill. I think it's the rookie defensive end, Phil Hansen. It is Hansen, number 90. Boy, the leg injuries that we've seen just in this game alone. It seems like four or five of them, we've had players on the field because of leg injuries. All right, let's check in for other NFL action now and go to Bob Costas for an update. Bob? In San Diego, Tom, the Atlanta Falcons end their 19-game road-losing streak. As the game comes to a close, John Carney of the Chargers could have tied it. He misses from 47. He missed three field goals on the day, although all of them were 45 yards or better. So Atlanta is 1-2, and, and San Diego is 0-3, losing on their home field to the Falcons, 13-10. All right, Bob, here at the Giants Stadium, 2.59 remaining. Buffalo has taken a three-point lead on the Jets. Tony Stargell, number 45, 
Saw the Bills drive down and score the go-ahead touchdown a moment ago, and now Coslett's offense still with a chance to win or tie, but a long ways away. Look at the difference in clinching points. Fourth quarter points, Buffalo 42, the Jets 19. And, of course, uh, last year at Rich Stadium, the Bills pulled out one against the Jets. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League and intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of the telecast without the express written consent of the New York Jets and the National Football League is prohibited. The scheme, the property of the National Football League, New York Jets and Buffalo Bills, all rights reserved. Hanson walking gingerly to the sidelines. That means Mark Pike will come in now on the defensive line for the Buffalo Bills. 6'4", 272 in his fifth year out of Georgia Tech. Seventh round draft choice back in 86. There's Mark Pike. Well, the Bills know what they need to do, Tom. They need to stop the Jets from getting in the scoring position. The Jets have 2.59 left on the clock. Plenty of time to get in position if they've got to keep their cool and work their offense. First down at the 25 for the Jets. They have three timeouts in here. Unless he fell right on the football in that area around the armpit or chest area. Let's take a look. Watch how Toon falls. He seems to have injured his chest and he falls right on that ball. That's the only two things that I ever disliked about pro football, really. We're losing and getting hurt. I yep. mean, that's awful. The only two? Yeah, that, that's, that's the only two that really were a drag. Here's another one. Hanson with the leg injury. will be taken to the locker room and Al Toon on his feet. He's caught eight passes for 90 yards today or 99 yards. Coslett says, what happened? We need you. <laughs> Second and four for the Jets on their own 31. You see the clock remaining. Buffalo with a three-point lead. off short to Blair Thomas. Thomas all the way to the 44-yard line and a jet first down. Cornelius Bennett caught up to him. And that'll bring us to the two-minute warning here at Giant Stadium. We've got a timeout for the two-minute warning as the Jets try to catch the Bills. Send the game into overtime with a touchdown on the final play of regulation. Let's go! Let's go! As soon as we won the coin toss, I knew we were going to score. Everything was going our way at that point. O'Brien's back to throw. O'Brien's rolling long down the sideline for Walker. And he's got it. Touchdown. The Jets are going berserk. They're bombing Wesley Walker in the end zone. Buffalo leading the Jets by three with two minutes left. Joe Pat Leahy's longest career field goal, 55 yards. Knowing that, what do the Jets do as far as play calling here? All their timeouts remaining. Well, O'Brien will be patient. He'll try to hit some underneath stuff. He has plenty of time, plus his three timeouts left out there. So O'Brien's going to try to pick that Bills, Bills defense. The Bills, on the other hand, are going to try and come up with a blitz. The Bills should try to put pressure on Kelly with some kind of a blitz. First down play for the Jets. It's a play action pass. Can't get it. Diving attempt. Brian went down in the teeth of the rush. Cornelius Bennett on top of him. The best pass defense there is is pressure on the quarterback. And you watch. You see Cornelius Bennett getting in here because Moore is wide open. And because Cornelius Bennett put that pressure on O'Brien, he misfired. Bennett has been a force defensively in the second half for Buffalo, their most uh, consistent defensive performer, and single-handedly has held the Jets at bay on a couple of drives. 155 left. O'Brien, ooh, what a hit. Mathis caught it and was dropped by Kirby Jackson. Now we got to remember here, Tom, this is a four-down zone. It's third down and about three. The Jets have two downs to pick this first down up. So that could influence Bruce Koslick's play calling here. They don't need to throw right now. They might try and stick a run in there. 
They've gotten Wisenhunt in for two tight ends, Dressel and Wisenhunt. O'Brien rolls, incomplete, intended for Wisenhunt. There's a flag down. Side against the Bills will give the Jets a first down. Amazing. We saw it happen last week up at Buffalo with the Pittsburgh Steelers jumping off sides in critical third down situations. Offside, number 31, defense lined up in the neutral zone. Five yards. Can you believe that? It lined up in the wrong place. Lined up in the wrong place. James Williams, the cornerback. Just didn't pay attention where he was lining up that time and was in the neutral zone from the get-go. First down, Jets. The ball spotted at the 44-yard line of the Buffalo Bills. 1.14 left. Buffalo leading New York 23-20. timeout stopping the clock at a minute five is Pat Leahy oldest player in the NFL perhaps hoping for a chance to tie it timeout Bills by three this fall the ratings war Tom Hammond and Joe Namath Giants Stadium Buffalo 23 the Jets 20 a minute five left Jets with two timeouts remaining and Marv Levy has seen his defense victimized at time today hope they can make one last stand here Pat Leahy's career-long field goal, 55 yards, so the Jets still need to get a little closer. Two timeouts remaining. Here's Leahy. Believe me, he'd rather kick an extra point than he would a field goal. More Mathis, Toon, and Burkett. Four wide receivers, two either side. Short drop and a draw play. And to Hector. Hector's got a first down. He is to the 33-yard line of the Bills is a smart play right there not just because it worked I mean smart in the way the play is designed O'Brien will get all the way back in position and hand the ball forward very deceptive draw play Bills have eight players up at the line of scrimmage O'Brien going for the end zone nobody even close mix up in that call as Moore broke his pattern short O'Brien threw it long stops the clock at 35 seconds well James Williams did a fine job on Moore over there that time Williams the cornerback had Moore one on one and he just stopped Moore from going deep he kind of confused Moore and O'Brien there's James good coverage that time the ball is at the 33 yard line it would still be about a 50 yard field goal Second and ten for Coslitz Jets. 35 seconds left. The Jets still have two timeouts. 21 and 34 on the day. Again, four wide. Out of bounds. Incomplete. Intended for Rob Moore. They say he was out of bounds. No catch. But they, the fans wanted an interference call that seem to be making contact before the ball gets there let's take a look oh my goodness I got away with one that time because I tell you this is a worse bump than the one they called on Stargell I mean he's all over oh, him boy. that's a mugging well I tell you what the Bills got away with one that time folks uh, JD Williams can thank his lucky stars on that one he should have been whistled for pass interference instead it's third and ten for the Jets He'll lose two, and now Leahy is faced with about a 52 or 53-yard field goal attempt. Bad play by the Jets. Well, that's the one thing Bruce Coslett did not want to have happen for Pat Leahy. That moves him back farther and makes it about a 52-yard field goal attempt. 39, 49, and another seven is good. Hey, this is going to be a long try. Five of 22, 50 yards or more for Pat Leahy. 40 years old, the oldest player in the National Football League. For 18 years, 
He's been kicking. Going to be about a 51-yard attempt, Tom. 51 yards. Pat Leahy to tie. 23 seconds left. Aguiar, the punter, holds for Leahy. 51 yards to tie. at the conclusion of the game. Don't forget NBC's premier primetime lineup starting with the adventures of Mark and Brian, Erie, Indiana, Man of the People, Pacific Station, and the Sunday movie Problem Child on its network premiere. All coming up at the conclusion of the game. 16 seconds left. And the Bills will win the game, Joe, with only 19 minutes of possession time. Well, Coach Levy's team didn't play their absolute best, no doubt, but I promise you, Coach Levy's a happy man. His team will come out with the win. The Jets, they played a fine game. They have nothing to feel bad about except coming up on the short end of the scoreboard. And that will kill the clock as the Buffalo Bills come from behind to take the victory against the New York Jets. Here is the play of the game. Leahy missed what could have been a tying field goal from 51 yards. And now our Cannon camcorder play of the game. Thurman Thomas wide open. I'm surprised as much as he does for this deal offense. You'd think that the Jets would have someone pinned to Thomas. But he's wide open for the touchdown. Tom Hammond for Joe Namath. So long. This has been the NFL on NBC.